Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome to day eight of Creative Quarantine. Woo! Yes, indeed, eight complete days. Who would have thunk it? But we've made it to day three. I mean, day eight. I got my numbers all screwed up in my head. Um, the artists are in various stages of development from still prepping to execution to originals being completed to... I could just, whew, they're all, it's all over the place. And we got some that are still trying to gain momentum. And we have a few that are not feeling so well. So with that being said, hello, Louise. Hey, how's it going? Well, you know, it's going. It's well, going. You know, I think I was, it's going I was, well. I was thinking, you know, when we, we start, we always jump right in. And um, tell me about, tell me a little bit about your day, how things got started. What were you, you know? Share it a little bit. Well, you know, uh, that's boring stuff, but that's what women want to know. So I'm going to follow you on this. I got up <laughs> this morning at 12 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> My days are getting later and later instead of earlier and earlier. But... Mm -hmm. I am resting my body. You know, I'm a cancer, a person that lives with cancer. So my, my energy level can fluctuate from time to time. Mm -hmm. I am doing very, very well, uh, despite that diagnosis. And uh, so I have to watch my, um, I have to watch my hours. Cause okay. you know, I'm in the grind right now between uh, programming and uh, getting on the table. Mm -hmm. um, I've been really grinding out some work despite all the things that's going on. You know, I'm trying to monitor the artists. All of them are having different uh, issues at this point, mm -hmm. uh, solvable issues at that. You know, as you develop a project like this, sometimes things just come up that you got to you gotta find a, a solution to. So we are l learning on the, on the job. <laughs> We're learning on the job. I know. So um, did you... Did you stay late last night? Because I know you were in the grips of working on some stuff last night. Yeah, my average uh, departure time has been between 12 and 3.30 in the morning. Mm. Uh, but I, I've, been, I've been still averaging six to eight hours of sleep. Okay. So I get up when my body is up. Okay. And I start to cycle all over again. And okay. so I usually, because the show airs at a certain time, I try to come in get my content ready, work on a couple pieces. Mm -hmm. Then the show comes on. I work while the show's on. Mm -hmm. The show goes off. Then I'm still working here until <laughs> I look at the clock and I go, okay, I think you need to go home. You better go home. Yes, so I, I thought yesterday was really, really fun. Uh, you did some really, uh, did some new stuff, tried some new things. I thought we uh, it kind of had a whole nother vibe to it, which was kind of nice. I think that that's, that's to be expected that the show will evolve over time as artists adjust. I mean, you know, um, most of the artists, I would say to all, um, at least 10 of them mm -hmm. are not used to being in front of the public and not be used to broadcasting themselves, being in front of a camera. Mm -hmm. And so you're talking about being fast tracked for the first week, not only with just uh, learning technology to be able to show your content, mm -hmm. but being able to just, you know, balance that out while working too. So I give all the artists credit where credit is due. Um, this process is, uh, is is new to all of us. We have broken all records by making it to day eight. <laughs> and uh, by the time 31 is over, I think we might have cemented the uh, record for the longest broadcasted <laughs> show for a while because <laughs> we might have to go on a vacation, masks and all. I think so. Everybody's <laughs> like, let's just pack up and go. Let's pack up and go. So definitely. So what about um, you? I mean, you asked me how my day was. How was your day? Because you know, you you're the, you're my partner in crime in this whole thing. <laughs> you have my back. I have your back, and I know you got all kinds of things you juggling over there. So what's going on in Colorado, Fort Collins? Colorado, Fort Collins is you know it is doing its thing. You know it's doing its thing, and I'm doing my thing. I I think my eyes are a little lower than usual. <laughs> <laughs> but I have been uh, I have been getting my sleep and things like that. I got up a little later today, probably about 10, uh, 9 or 10 today. So but, you know, I'm making it happen. And I did stay up late um, just working on the things that we, like when you and I both were finishing up some stuff. So, of course, we wanted to stay late. But the other thing that I had to catch up on was my devotional because I have been, I'm, I'm actually doing the, going through the Bible in a year. So I'm, I'm, I'm a couple of days back. 
So, <laughs> you might end up being 30 days back if you don't keep up. So I yeah, who knows? Up maybe, that'll up, maybe that'll show up in your work. Maybe uh-huh. that'll be included in the direction of your work. Right. You I know? had to stay up a little later to do some catch up. <laughs> but well, right yeah, now, everything's been working out really well. I, I, I find that um, I really enjoy what, what's going on right now. And I have, you know, I get to talk to artists. You know, they call me, especially like like you said, they have some problems uh, being able to have, help problem solve for them is really great. And it just tells me that they're all in, you know, they're they're all in. Well, you know, the funny thing is we uh, we try to do a couple things with this new project. So we tried to send everybody iPads so uh-huh. that they can document their experience. I need yeah. some coffee for that one, because uh, the person <laughs> that we bought the iPads from gave us um, uh, a unit cost that was prohibitive. And we have uh, iPads that did not end up being able to do the job that was required in this platform. So learning process received. Right. But they they artists- work really well, though, let me tell you, because mm-hmm. uh, I've tried tons of things with them, but they re- work really well for the Bible app and doing your devotional. On. So, <laughs> I, I, I'm using that one. So I'm like, okay, I don't have to use my other devices. I can do well, that, sit here that, with that. Well, that's, you're different because you have multiple devices there. I'm really addressing this to artists who'd had no technology and they're having problems with not only learning the iPad, but learning what to do with this iPad. So right. it's still good enough for them to document their experience, their videos mm-hmm. and everything. But they have to unload those videos fast as they do them because the, the, <laughs> the iPad don't store much. So right. it's been a real learning experience trying to put out those types of fires. And we have some artists that have uh, bandwidth issues. So mm-hmm. they, they might have a good uh, uh, connection one day, poor connection next day. <laughs> we try to work around it the best way we can. But so far, everybody's game. Right. You might see a frozen screen every now and then. But that's part of the deal. <laughs> <laughs> that's part of life. That's, that's part right. of life. <laughs> so we're going to get this party started. I got a, uh, something that uh, Michelle sent me that I've been holding on to. So it's just a reflection of her first week. So here we go. Cool. Here is my diary, day three, creative quarantine. Um, I'm feeling a lot better today. And I went yesterday, I have to admit, when I started yesterday, I was a little panicked. Um, today, I'm feeling a lot better. I have several, I spent last night sketching some uh, pictures onto Canvas and editing some videos so that I could see what was working and what wasn't. I've changed lighting and I've added a microphone, and hopefully that'll help with the sound. And watch, I'm going to walk away with this microphone attached to me at some point, but, you know, we'll get there. And... I'm excited to start a few projects. I think I might even finish a couple of the tiny paintings today. Um, I wanted to see if I could just get the brush in my hand and see what finishing a thing feels like. Because for me, sometimes it's really hard to get over the inertia of of not painting for a while. And once I start getting going, I can knock out a bunch of paintings all at once. But the key is to have the brush in my hand. And I really think it's the physical act of moving the brush against canvas that seems to be the trigger for really getting into the paint. And that's what I'm looking forward to feeling today. And I really hope that that's what happens. Um, today was a lot better. My kid did not have a fit this time going um, going w- with me coming here, although that may have, have had something to do with letting them download the new expansion to Pokemon Sword and Shield, but you know, you do what you can. And um, I'm looking forward to a lot of things. Um, Presenting was harder than I expected. I have to say, uh, I didn't realize that I would have such performance anxiety. I have no problems videotaping myself, conversing alone in my studio, but knowing that people are watching live is really hard. Uh, it makes me feel like I can't paint. Yesterday when I went to go paint uh, a fox onto a picture, the fox had broken legs and I couldn't remember how to draw legs of foxes despite the fact that I've been drawing foxes for 15 years. You would think that I would know what a fox looks like. (coughs) Performance anxiety does that. So hopefully I can get over it and 
but you know, it's only day three, so I've got time. It'll be fine. Have a good one. See you soon. Here I am starting a uh, painting I sketched last night. Um, this one is of a raven holding the moon. Um, it's been a kind of idea that I sketched out a couple times, um, and I'm looking forward to starting it. I thought that this would be a fun project to try um, this glass medium that I bought from Liquitex. Um, it's got, it's a clear acrylic medium with glass beads in it. The glass beads will show, it, theoretically, the glass beads should show the color that I lay down underneath. So I was going to lay down some nice bright uh, greens and teals and maybe even a little purple. And I'm going to try some metallics in this one because uh, um, unlike some of the paintings that I do, this one's not meant for reproduction. So I can use pigments that won't reproduce in print form. So right now I'm going to be laying down the base colors that are going to be showing through. And then I'm going to use paint spray over everything, kind of wash it. And my goal is to have it look like there's the Milky Way coming across and here's the moon and this raven. I'm gonna seal the raven sketch with, with airbrush medium because I like sketching in pencil because I often like to sketch directly on the canvas and pencil can be removed easily. But the downside of pencil is it can smear and it can dirty up the paint. So. So I want to seal that in there. This will also make the sketch a little bit brighter, which might be a problem if I was doing something else. But um, in this case, uh, it, it's going to be painted in dark, dark colors. So having it show through a little bit is not a bad thing. But this will also make sure that the um, subsequent layers of paint will stick. It'll keep that from smearing. The nice thing about acrylic is, especially with you painting this as I do, there's a lot of layers you can add. So if you mess up one layer, you have to fix it the next. So like this is going to be the moon and I'm going to want to bring that right away back, but I can always re so if I need. So this way the sketch isn't going anywhere and it'll stop smearing every time that I move my hand around. I also use anything as mixing palettes. Um, this actually has color already on the other side. These are the covers of very useful boxes. I use them for all sorts of things, including like that's actually the brand name, very useful box. But I even use them for shipping sometimes. These are color chipped paints. So when painted on the deck, like so in the green in the bottle, but when painted on this will actually be kind of a gold. And from some angles it'll be green, and from some angles it'll be gold, and I really love the effect. This one actually turns, I believe, green when, or sorry, this one's purple when in certain light. I'm going to paint these around the outside or mix them in with the color too. Um, the green, I love this green because it's really good for um, making lighting pop. So I was going to just put this subtly around the moon um, because it'll make the moon have a glowing effect in the end. Um, and I don't want it to look like the raven itself is glowing. Backlit, sure, but not glowing. Because um, it's the moon that should be the the primary visual. So let's see. We'll start. Start with a touch of this color, and I'm just going to mix this into the teal too, because it'll make the teal a little bit brighter. And ultimately, we're going to be putting a lot of layers of dark, dark colors on this. So. I was very lucky. The reason why I have these glass beads is because AC Moore actually closed down last year um, around Christmas. They, uh, the Holyoke Mall, it's the only AC Moore in the area. I think the, the closest one now is Boston or Rhode Island. But they clearance out all their paints, and I went and was able to afford the paints that normally were far out of my price range, like the $20 orange, which was very nice. This is a $15 medium, and normally I wouldn't spend $15 on something experimental, but they clearanced it out to less than $6, and 
you know, at almost like a little over a third of what it's worth. Yeah, I'll try that. <laughs> and if I like it, then maybe I'll buy some more in the future. Um, I really like to find things on clearance when possible. I always use airbrush medium instead of water. Sometimes I use a touch of water, but the airbrush medium keeps the paint film intact, especially in the base layers. Um, I used to use a lot more water and then I started having adhesion issues and that was a real learning experience. So um, it creates a very chalky finish. So I'm not going to be too careful about where I paint this. Um, this is just the base layer. I'm probably going to do two coats because so, uh, I don't want the white stickiness. That can be a nice effect sometimes when you do it right, but uh, I typically like a nice thorough thing. But I don't mind a little subtle color variation. That's why I'm mixing the two colors together because that'll create a beautiful effect later. I don't want to use too much of that green though because in the end, I want that green to pop where I purposely put it. I'll speed up the process in a few minutes. The thing about painting a thing like this is it's, it's done in layers and then you put it aside. Um, you don't want to try to rush it all at once. You want the layers to thoroughly dry in between, especially like when I add that medium, that medium is going to take time to dry. There's no help in that. And so I'd actually originally just painted, I have several canvases like this, and I knew I was going to do a series of animals with space backgrounds. And so I took the edges and I painted up Payne's, Payne's Gray a couple of layers because I knew that that was a time consuming task. And while I didn't know what this was ultimately going to end up, I did know that that would save me some time. get more of that green, but I want to switch brushes because I want that green in the peak area. Kind of whooshing my brush around. I use cheap brushes for these steps because I am pretty hard on my brushes and it doesn't make sense. Like, if you have a really, really nice brush, you don't want to destroy the bristles. I'm just letting that blue kind of seep in. Ultimately, it'll make a nice effect. It'll kind of unify that curl. Now that your brush is a bit drier. Thankfully, it color dries really fast and it's very dry in here. All right, let's see. Where did I put? And I keep a couple things of paint water when I work with acrylics. I keep a dirty, like a very dirty bin where I wash off my brush first and that keeps the brushes moist. Um, and then I have a cleaner water that, I, that after I wipe the rest of the dirty water out of the brush that I finish up. And I found that that's an economical way of not contaminating as much water because ultimately, while technically these are non-toxic, um, you know, they are microplastic. And I just really don't want to put microplastics in our environment. So I don't want any green that down, any green, even though it's considered safe to. So I've developed a technique where I try to contaminate as little water as possible and the dirty water I put near the radiator to just, um, I want it to kind of evaporate out. And then I, I, what I do is actually put it in plastic cups and by doing so, I can then throw out the plastic cup after the water's evaporated out, which leaves all the pigment behind. And that means that none of the pigment goes in the water supply. Because who wants to drink that? Not toxic or not. Well, this is a cheaper teal. It's got excellent coverage and it's got good, um, what's it called? Uh, I've even used this on my electric box outside because it has decent um, light fastness. It's light fastness one. And that's really more important to me than then, you know, is it made of some fancy stone? It's a student quality paint, so there's less pigment in it, but that just means you need more coats. As long as the light fastness is there, that's what matters to me. Do 
You don't want to make a painting that uh, falls apart. This I'm going to go in with some white because I forgot just how translucent that lovely, lovely green is. It's called Brilliant Yellow Green. But it really can, if you use it just right, produce a beautiful glow. I use it a lot on my, I do space shoes for commission. And it is a popular effect. Sometimes I'll even put a little bit of paint over it. Ultimately, this is going to be, there's going to be dark streaks. This is going to be more of a diagonal. Um, but I'm going to try some of this. This is actually... I'm just experimenting here. Like this is not me being an expert. Um, I've used these on models, but I've never used these in a painting, but they are quite beautiful. And I absolutely love the effect. And after doing some paint pours with mica involved, I really wanted to try introducing more mediums like that where you have this beautiful shimmer effect. Ultimately, this painting is going to be, when I'm done with everything, I'm going to gloss varnish it. The gloss varnish will really bring out the color, but it'll also unify. Like one of the things when you use different kinds of acrylics all together is, especially different brands, they can have different finishes. Some can be matte, some can be, I'm going to guess, you know, from the effect of this medium, it's so translucent that I think that I would be better off um, painting in the paints gray before adding more of that. But hey, it's a learning experience. So I'm going to add in the paints gray. And then after I'm confident with my underlayer, I'm going to start adding the medium on top, which is going to take a lot longer to dry because it needs to be applied thickly. I just got to remember where I put my paints gray. I might even add a little bit of purple just to make that green. I think I'm going to do purple instead of paints gray right in the under layer, and I'll do paints right over it. I'll take that purple, because that'll make that yellow really pop when we get there. I also love the way that this teal blends with this uh, purple. I've, I've used them together before, and that can be quite lovely. Here's the purple. I'm just going to, you know, the edges especially, I just want it to like, so this is still moist, so I can blend these together, but I'm going to have to add some to the moist bits. But yeah, I'm kind of just going to together and mix the colors together on the canvas, and then as I blend it, Sometimes I'll add medium. Sometimes I dry brush, and that can be a beautiful effect because the texture of the canvas shows through, but you kind of need to be careful about the brush strokes if you do that. You need a truly dry brush to, to not have brush strokes. And that's the effect that I often do on shoes is actually blending entirely through dry brushing, which can take a while because if you do it right, you know, you don't have I'm going to have to give it weird edges and let the colors do weird things. It's a little bit more purple than I meant. One of the things about these type of canvases is you really want to get the edges and the corners because that's where they rub um, when stored. But they also kind of absorb the paint and sometimes you think that's where the canvas kind of overlaps. Sometimes you think you got in there and then it dries and you're like, this kind of didn't just miss a spot, I missed a canyon. Because the gloss can also trick you too. And I try to make sure that it's wrapped all the way around. I don't, you know, I don't detail paint the back, but I do want to make sure that there isn't a white line when it's hung against the wall. And I always love this effect because when you do it right, 
It can be really striking, especially if you really pay attention to the care and detail on the edges and treat them like the rest of the painting and not just as an afterthought. I, I have done just black before and that can work, but when I really put the time and effort in, you can tell. So that looks like a nice underlayer, especially knowing that I'm going to be going over with the layers of paint spray on top. Um, this, yeah, I'm going to underlayer that way then. By adding these underlayers and letting them peek through later in the process, like I'm a little bit nervous about covering up that sketch, but I also know what a raven looks like. So yeah, I always try to remind myself that like, um, if I liked it once, I can paint it again. It's not, it's not rocket science. The key about birds is you got this skull here, and you got this patch of feathers here, and ravens have these kind of chins, I guess, like, like almost like a beard of these triangular feathers that point down. And so for a raven, you want to get into the shadows on those feathers. But since this is going to be backlit, you can kind of get away with letting them blend in. I'm going to give it kind of a golden eye because that will make the eye pop even if that's not quite realistic. <coughs> For a long time, I really focused on realism in my pictures. And then I realized that like um, the things that I weren't happy about were basically came down to, I was overthinking and over controlling. And so I'm going to add this purple blue pigment while this purple pigment still in this. Let's see how that works. Kind of an ethereal finish. And that'll also help on these edges. Oh, it's a little bit messy with that paint's gray. When I first put it on, I kind of regret that because the paint's gray is so much darker than. I want to get the basic form and then I want to break it up a little to make sure it looks kind of like clouds. And maybe that will be having this kind of <coughs> effect. You don't want to break it up too much because then you kind of lose the statement. It's a balance. That's art for you. A balance. All right. I'm gonna let that dry. Uh, I want it to dry thoroughly because I don't want, when I add that medium, I don't want it to pick up any of the pigment underneath. I want it to just be clean. And it's more important that the, um, that the, like I want to only hit the background and not pick the raven, which should give it a really cool dimensional effect when I'm done. I'm gonna re so the moon, I think, just to bring that back out. And thankfully, I know that this yellow will blend up with itself. So if I take a little bit of white and apply it over that blue and then re-yellow it, I should be able to get the whole thing to look. All right. So there's a little bit of peek into my process. <laughs> Thank you. 
are fully dry underneath. It's been at least an hour, probably closer to um, plenty of time. I'm curious about this stuff because I'm wondering if I can use it to kind of like jumpstart some of the, you know, process of doing um, space because 
if I can get it to work, and I don't mind a little texture, I like this texture. But I'm a little disappointed that there aren't quite as many beads as I expected. Not sure if it makes them stir. Or maybe there's more beads than I can see. I don't know. Maybe I'll stick it in my brush. I don't like a lot of beads. I also got out some regular non-textured, or well it's gel, but without the beads in it, so that I could kind of blend the beads into the rest of the canvas. I want the beads where I've got this color because I kind of want to hint at the Milky Way. I do want a bit of texture, but I don't want it to look like it's a brush. I used a really stiff, stiff, stiff brush um, for this. It seems that they really must stick to the brush and not to the canvas. I guess this is a really thick medium. I wasn't sure what to expect. The thing about anything that's supposed to dry clear, I'm always really careful because if you pet it too much, you can sometimes lose some of the translucent. And it ends up drying white because you overworked it. That includes things that one uses to seal, which I find the hard one. I want to scrape it off the paintbrush. Just kind of push it around. I don't mind if they stay in clumps because stars stay in clumps. What I really like for this effect to do is for the glass beads to show the colors underneath so that when I paint other things, kind of mix it up a bit. Maybe the stuff on the top just has those beads. I don't know. Not sure how it works, to be honest. But I'm liking the texture, so we'll just go with it. I wish I had brought my sponges to the studio. I have a little bit of sponge, but not my full complement. I don't find a little on the edge. I'm trying to avoid getting too much. So, like, uh, you know, ultimately these do need to be transported and stored. And um, I don't want to go too crazy with texture on the edges because I've learned the hard way that it can get knocked off. Even if you wrap them very carefully. So I want to put the texture where it's needed. So, you know, I don't want it to be like textured front, nothing on the bottom. But I also don't want to create a hazard for myself. You can see it's already starting to dry, so I don't want to touch anywhere that's already starting to dry. I'm wondering, if, because a second coat might get more, more of an effect because it would better capture the little beads. So let's put that aside and see how it dries. Um, I'm actually going to be leaving my studio shortly, so this is an awesome chance to see how it dries overnight. Um, I wanted to not noodle around with it and not be tempted to noodle around with it, so I thought that doing it right before I left the studio for the evening is the best best decision possible. So I'm just getting some of those glass beads on the side. Enough to suggest texture. All right, and so here we are. Um, this is gonna look pretty cool regardless, even if, it, even if there's a little bit of white where it dries, that's okay. It'll still look galaxy-like. Um, I just wanna break up. Oop, we're fiery, truly. I'm just, I just noticed there's a little bit of brush strokes. I just want to break up those brush strokes just a, just a hair. Swirls are fine. Brush strokes, though, look a little too contrived. All right. I'm sure no one would notice but me. I am a pattern noticer. It would drive me nuts. All right, so that's looking pretty good. Now I want to add this medium everywhere. I had done this really beautiful texture. And I feel kind of weird about putting this on it because I'm a little nervous that it's going to dry, quote unquote, wrong. But I mean, the worst that happens is that I have to redraw 
or repaint what I painted before. It's not that big a deal. And this one, the brush strokes matter less because what I can do is kind of make it look like, you know, if, as long as I'm conscious about how I'm applying them, I can kind of make it look like they're exploding out. I want the little beads to kind of crest and be thickest where the lightest colors are. That's the stuff I really want to show through. So in this one, I want the brush strokes. And they also add a little bit of diagonal look. We also have that beautiful texture from the birch one. So I want to squish, squish these beads around in big areas. I'm hoping that I'm not overworking it. So I'm going to leave that to dry. Thankfully, the air is really, really dry in here. So I'm expecting that to be pretty fast. And since I have some extra, I'm just, I like doing a couple paintings at a time, especially ones that are a little bit more flexible for this reason, so that I can not waste, you know. Like I said, those glass beads seem to really stick to this brush. We'll just get a little crest of them over here. All right. I can't wait to see how that dries. So they'll be left overnight untouched. <laughs> and I look forward to the results in the morning. Well, 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 Miss Michelle is getting into it over there with the glass. I, I think she probably uses less paint than I've ever seen anybody use in my life. You are muted. She works with tiny brushes. Tiny brushes and no paint. I think it's fantastic. It's because I'm the polar opposite. I glop on paint. I waste paint like gallon of paint. We saw yesterday. We 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 saw. We saw. But that's okay. Yeah. I like using. I like. I like using up my paint. Everybody's <laughs> got their own style. You know what I mean? Exactly. Exactly. And that's the way it should be. So what you got going on? Well, I'm gilding over here. You got, what you um, want to present gonna... today? What are you presenting today? What am I presenting today? What are happened you, to Lorraine? She's not you, in. Who's that? What happened to Lorraine? Lorraine, Lorraine is not feeling well today, but uh, you know, we got a little something in the queue. Oh, we always got something in the queue. That's right. I want, I mean, we got keep we gotta keep things in the queue because folks, you know, they they watching us. <laughs> well, they okay. Well, if they're watching, give us a shout out. If you're out there, don't forget to share. Give us a shout. That's right. Here we go. Where, where are we going? We're going places. <laughs> Hi, my name is Karen Wildbuster. I'm from Baltimore, Maryland. And I did a quarantine, uh, I think it was 2006, with myself and five other artists. 
um, with Poncho. Um, it was the very first quarantine that I have ever done. And I must say that um, I was forced to create. And I, I don't mean forced in terms of somebody making me, but myself making myself. I mean, it was cool. It was cool sitting in, in, in a room with um, five other artists, knowing that you had five other artists there, knowing that the juice of um, creative, creativity was kind of like flowing all over the place. You know, the, the vibe was good. The music was good. The conversation was good. It was great getting up and just walking around and seeing what other artists and how they were creating. And it became like a spiritual journey because we we not only spoke on art, we just spoke on um, life. We spoke on the struggle uh, of, of an artist at times and how uh, like minds come together to, to make this thing work. So the quarantine it is definitely a great thing. Um, I've been watching. I've been watching this one in 2000. Now 21, uh, really, really uh, intensely. I mean, I like the idea of uh, how it's going now. You know, how it's going now to be able to uh, see you guys virtually in each other's studios and seeing how you create. It's just this. It's a different kind of feeling, a different kind of flow. Sure. Sorry, Karen. Oh man, I might remember what I said. Mm. I'll take some of that and some of this. <laughs> you can try to pick up what you left off, and I'll just pick it. Pick up. Okay. Go ahead, keep going. Yeah. So you know, that's a that's a different kind of flow watching you guys and uh, me sitting on the other side now. Um, as so many other people are just kind of like tuned into uh, into the live feed and seeing you create um, artists that I know, you know, uh, Karen Clark, you know, I've known her for a minute. We went to Africa together on that the, my first trip to Africa, but to sit there and watch her throw and 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 see it all come up in a, into fruition, just like right there, it's like, well, well I knew you did it. But seeing is a different thing. The Sean, it was the same thing. Um, actually watching work, learning about Mr. Mr. Mary, um, you know, and how you do what you do, um, the way that you do it um, was was good as well. So I say great job to all of you guys. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing the outcome of everybody's work. Um, I'm gonna gonna ride this process with you uh, for the next uh, next few weeks, and um, keep staying creative.
day eight. Yeah, we have completed our first week. Uh, do I sound surprised? <laughs> what I'll tell you is this week has been uh, fast and steady. The learning curves have been coming quickly. Most of our learning curves have been coming with technology, uh, how to move videos around. Uh, you know, this process is not foolproof. Uh, we got some folks that have good reception one day, bad reception the next day. So we're just making it work the best way we can. We're learning a lot about copyrighted music online. Uh, you know, Facebook will shut you down if you're listening to a copyrighted music in your background. So we've had a couple of challenges with knowing what to play, what not to play. I've had to switch some things around the last minute to kind of accommodate things. Uh, we are still posting on, uh, I think, about seven locations right now. So make sure you check uh, our Creative Quarantine page on Facebook, the Art for the Soul Gallery page on Facebook. Uh, look up the Larry Poncho Brown channel and please subscribe. And you can see all the episodes there unobstructed with no break. So. Um, I hope you all binge watching. We are on number eight. Um, nice techniques. Artists are sharing a lot of really good information, uh, supplies that they're getting, and uh, things you can try at home. We got a couple of our followers that have been actually painting along with us. So this is really turned into something we did not expect in that regard. I think the artists are now all adjusting to um, articulating what they're doing uh, and being in front of the camera a little bit. we got some that are still struggling along to uh, adjust to that. I think they'll be fine as time goes on. Uh, we try not to press anybody. you got 12 people and you've got 12 personalities, 12 different sets of issues, emotional issues, physical issues, you name it. So we're just trying to be encouraging and the creative spirit will pull folks together. So that has been... Um, Really wonderful to watch. We had one uh, situation last night while where we uh, decided to do just an hour of painting. <coughs> and um, we had about five people in their studios and they would just work. Then uh, we were cut between each one of the people. Man, it was really, really nice. We were just uh, designing as we go. This is the first time I can honestly say that this is a landmark situation. We have actually published. For more than eight days, up from four to six hours of content. And what we're hoping to do, as we really get into this, and people are really creating and really beginning to show what they're doing and really doing some other things, that we can bring you more longer hours. We're looking at one day possibly doing a 12-hour show with just everybody outing what they're working on and what they're doing. So we're looking forward to that. I hope you guys are not getting, uh, 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 you know, bored yet. I don't know how you can be seeing all the different personalities and what they're working on. I'm hoping this encouraging you to work or at least do me a big favor and spread the word around so that people know what we're doing here. Because again, we, we're doing this to educate, um, to enlighten, uh, to share. And uh, so why don't you share too? So other than that, enough of my lecture. What am I working on today? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, my mask series is really my face in masks. I don't even want to call them masks because they don't look like masks. Uh, I want to say faces because they're, 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 they're faces made from um, dimensional, um, you know, acrylic medium and, and molding paste and embossed papers. And, and they all take a personality of their own. And you, can, you saw me most of the week preparing those papers, cutting them out, sticking them down, painting them black, and then going and then painting the final stages of them. So they're shaping up. Well, I think I've done, I think, 10 or 11 of them. And so I'm getting ready to break off and do something a little bit different. You know, that was a good warm up for the week to get me acclimated to painting and, and, and doing some composition on a few things. Those were very impromptu. So they're didn't get a chance to do a whole lot of planning on those, which was really cool. They were really kind of uh, impromptu, is how I approached it. So that's what I'm up to today. I'm going to finish up the last one. It may not be the last one. I don't want to put a period on the end of that yet. But it's, uh, I said I wanted to do 10. I think this is either the 10th or 11th one. I lost track. 
and you can see how I do the last stage. You saw the first stage, which is white paper. I glue on different types of paper, embossed paper, uh, put acrylic medium and build these textured areas. I go back, I paint over the whole thing black. <laughs> Excuse me. And then after I paint it black, I go back and I do a base of color just to pull out the details. And then at the very end, I do detailing color, color on the top. And that gives you this illusion of a face, an abstracted face. So I'm going to finish up number 10 or 11, and um, I'll be back with you. Well, my masks are getting funkier. I uh, worked on a couple last night to finish up. There's one. Here's another one. Look at that. Yeah, they're getting pretty funky. I have uh, wanted to do 10. I think I might have done close to 10 with these last few. Look at that one. Show and tell. So, yeah, that's what I can say. This whole series is really about creating personalities, creating faces from really just textures. And uh, they come along pretty nicely. Uh, they have evolved from some, a series of ones I did a few years ago. Um, but what I want to do is work on this one for a little bit for you while you're watching. So you can see how I get into them. This is the last day after all the coating and the, the gluing and the Gessoing and all the other things that happen. Um, I got trying to use different colorations on these pieces, but I'm feeling a little green today. So I'm gonna get into some green. See how that just let it flow. This whole series has really taken a whole different direction from what I normally do, which is what you really want in a quarantine is to press you other directions. And these I am not just working texture, I'm trying to work a different uh, color palette on them than I used in the past, which has been pretty earthy, but more monotone. This one's more using more color. I think they add another whole element of personality to these pieces. So I'm just going to come in here and do a few little things to it. I think uh, adding this color gives it a little more of an environment. So, you know, the artists are now making some great progress on their projects. I got a slew of paintings from um, Aaron. I'm not, not Aaron, I'm sorry. I got a slew of paintings from Brian Murray. That's what happens when you try to paint and talk at the same time. I am not usually, and most of us are not usually narrating while we paint. That is a little bit uh, unusual. If you hear a lot of banging and clanging, it's because in my studio space, it's that time of the day where everybody's trying to get their shipments down to the loading dock. So, nice here. A few machines going by. I'm in an industrial building, been here for 13 years. I like the space, it feels like home. So Ryan sent his first uh, three completed pieces in, and we'll be showing those online today, so you can get a, kind of catch up with what's happening 
with everybody in the group. Um, things have been really moving along with the artists. Everybody's uh, got their first week under their belt, so we'll see what transpires in the days ahead. As you can see, I try to dry brush and do any colorations. I try to include it throughout the painting so that it won't just be part of the background. Today is Friday, so I'm sure that everybody's going to be in a different mood today. Sometimes I'll take that same color and put it in other areas of the face as, as reflective color. So they can look related. But this mask series has really um, taken on a new pattern. I think I'm going to be breaking away from these soon and moving to something else. It's a great warm up for the week as I tried to get myself acclimated to working. Gave me a chance to get outside of my head for a minute. A lot of the artists are now preparing for collaboration, so we should be seeing some pretty exciting stuff coming up soon, especially next week as artists begin to receive those. I can't wait to get mine from LeSean Bill. That should be fun, a little departure from what's happening. I think I'll give that a little hit too. As you can see, I'm just touching the high points with a few color here and there. Let's see, at this stage, I'm going to take just a real good brush for um, doing edges. Because what happens is that when you dry brush, you don't want to leave a line. So this rounded brush is a good choice for doing dry brushing. That's what this technique is called. All artists call it something different, but basically I am hitting the high points with paint. And... Uh, the low points are the black you saw me coating. Last couple of weeks, I've been, days I've been coating black paper. And many of you have been wondering, what is he doing? What is, why is he painting black on black? What is he, is he stuck into something? So now you see what the whole plan was. So as you can see, I'm putting the final touches on him. I am now taking paint and putting it on the high areas that relate to the painting.
And the funny thing about all of these pieces is that they look completely different. And they all have their own personality. Which is kind of what I was looking for. Let's see. I'm going to now try to hit a couple of the high areas just to bring a little bit more detail into the piece. This part you gotta be very light handed and try not to overdo it. I think it adds a little dimension to these pieces. I don't know if I'm gonna do much with this uh, other area over here, but something is asking me to do something a little unusual. So I'm gonna follow that directive. dry brushing the operative word there is dry so even when you clean out your brush you want to try to get as much moisture out of that brush as possible so I have a whole slew of rags around here that I use to keep my brushes dry Let's see I think I'm gonna go a little funky over here just a little teeny should I go from the edge? Should I go from the inside? I think I'm going to go from the inside. Let's see. I'm going to come in here. In here. And I think I'll want to just mess around in here. That old question becomes, well, how much is too much? I tend not to worry about it. I always kind of know when, when enough is enough. I kind of know when I've gone too far. Um, and after exploring 10 of these, they all have kind of a balance. So I want to try to make sure I don't create one that doesn't fit in the group. You see how I try to let as much of those little black markings show as part of the base. Like that, that little detail kind of helps the piece flow a little bit. And I'll try to hit some orange points with some of that too, but not too much. Ah, you know, 
That little brain of mine is saying, well, since you got a sunlight thing going on here, maybe you can hit that. Make that orange too. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I can live with that. So I am actually nearing the finish line on this particular piece. You know that whole thing of knowing when to stop. It's a big thing. And uh, I don't want to go beyond the thing. You got to go back. You got to replay like that, like what I just did. That was too much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get let to punk out and take that out completely. And then I'm going to go back some oxide red and redo that space. I don't want to spread that orange out. I want to keep that orange kind of in one area. Which means i got to clean my brush out of that. Luckily, I have plenty of brushes. <coughs> so I'm just going to go in here and lightly just touch that spot that I went in too, too deep. You know, sometimes I'll be in here, I could be in here painting and forget to draw it out of there. <laughs> so, <laughs> again, most of us are not used to narrating as we paint. So you get a fresh perspective of what's happening. This is the first time we've ever done. I think I am at a good point with this. I think I want to stop now you can see i'll put it next to a couple of the other pieces so you can see the relation or non-relation of the two it's not too bad it's different enough it's not boring to see those two together uh what we got here. These two definitely make a good pairing. And then this one here, maybe not so much, but still, their faces look related. As you can see this one has a little bit of cowrie shell in it for the eye. Got a little piece of lace in the background of this one. So they have some nice little textures on them. So with that, I think I will sign me up. My which number is on uh, number eighteen? Yes, I think I'm on number eighteen. Eighteen since the first. I have got a good momentum going. I think I'm gonna pick it up and maybe get into it a little deeper this weekend and sign it over in here. Do I have a screw up on the signature? Absolutely. Imagine having to paint that over again because I've only painted thousands upon thousands of paintings with the same signature. It's like getting your name wrong on your check. When you're writing that check. All right, and so from here, all I can think to do is to uh, hit a couple spots in the low points with the black, just to open them up a little bit.
And I think we are just about there. And there we go. Another piece added to my collection of textural faces. And another palette that I am developing. So you can see the color relationships of all of the pieces that we painted in this series. Day eight is a monster, y'all. You know, the artists are all motivated. They've uh, gained some momentum. I think this first week allowed some of them to get into the flow. Um, those, those that were intimidated by the process, I think they've gotten out of that. We have a couple that are still trying to find their way, and maybe they will do that And as we enter into the second, the second week. Um, some people's portfolios are just expanding. Uh, there's some people here still doing prep, like with Sean Beal, he's doing a lot of prep. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Ryan Murray has just posted his first three pieces. I posted mine. Uh, we're going to be posting Karen Clark's uh, sculptural pieces, which I think are phenomenal. Um, but I want to talk to you about rest. The last few days I have been waking up 10, going to bed around two. Uh, old man can't do too many late nighters, but I've been trying to hang and I've been done, I've done three late nighters back to back. This morning is the first morning that I really felt it. I uh, didn't get into the studio until about 12, 1230. So still coming in, working, working while the show's going on, um, which is great. I get a chance to catch up with everybody else because, you know, we're in a broadcast and I can't create and so um, what not that it's just me, all the artists are breaking away for an hour, uh, half an hour, 20 minutes to talk. And it breaks their momentum sometimes, too. Um, so overall, day eight is great to getting ready for day nine. Wow, it just sounds wild, y'all, but the time is clicking and it's clacking. So let's uh, see what the next week will present creatively. Hello, everybody. Hello, Kathleen. How are you? I'm trying to manage my uh, performance stress and anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it is a big issue. Uh, but yes, I you are doing remarkably well. Well, I appreciate that. Heart attacks. And so the anxiety is putting a lot of pressure on my heart. And I'm mm -hmm. feeling like, oh, my God. <laughs> well, we, might, we might just Chill need out. you to submit more videos so we don't have to witness <laughs> you having another one. <laughs> I, think, I think Kathleen is doing absolutely amazing. She's doing great. <laughs> She's doing absolutely amazing. And you got a couple fans that's been following you. It's mm -hmm. amazing by what you do. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I have a, a, a close friend of mine here in Amherst. I know she's been watching the um, replays. Yeah, she checks in with me every day to let me know that she's watched watch the show. That's good. That's good. So why don't you just give us some reflections today? You ain't got to show nothing. You've have you've done a presentation every day for week one. So yeah, now well, I don't today, mind. Did they just talk about your experience so far and, and the, the things you've had to adjust to? You did mention just now the performance anxiety, but really, can you elaborate on that? Because I think a lot of other artists are feeling the same thing. 
Um, I, I mentioned it's somewhat yesterday, I think, or whatever day I mentioned it the first time. Like it uh, is, oh my God, do I have enough stuff? Do I have the right things? Is it going to be making sense? Is this a presentation that is reflective of what the creative uh, quarantine is all about? Ah! <laughs> 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 oh. um, so yeah, that's uh, that's a big part of it. I um, have to remind myself. Okay, if people don't like you, it doesn't matter. That's okay. <laughs> well, if they don't I, like this stuff, that's okay. <laughs> I think what happens is you're a five-time award winner, Kathleen. That's right. People like your stuff. <laughs> that's right. That's there you go. You know, you know we got to get outside of our own heads. I mean, the uh -huh. information that you've imparted this first week has been amazing. For those out there that didn't know much about, I mean, it's nice that we have two different people that work with two different types of clay because it's a lot of information. Mm -hmm. And uh, you've been part of the crew that's been trying to adjust to this tech thing. <laughs> um, you know, you, you have days where you're crystal clear and days when you're not, but today right. you're crystal clear. Crystal <laughs> clear. I think that's probably a part of, that's probably been a part of your anxiety was is just your tech. Absolutely. And once, once you, you know, know I said, I think part of your anxiety comes from your tech your technology, your, your tech. And so once, you know, and, and you, it is what it is. And so you just have to kind of work through it and you're going to be fine. Yeah. Well, that's, that's uh, not how I'm feeling about my anxiety. It's really more about um, making sure I have uh, the right tools and the right information mm -hmm. and getting it all organized in a way that makes sense and is clear mm -hmm. to people. Mm -hmm. um, well, I think you've been doing a good job of that. I think that once we uh, figure this thing out and incorporate video where you don't have to do a, a, a presentation every day, mm -hmm. we'll start to take some of the pressure off of you because right. that's a lot of the artists now are beginning to take time with their units. They're just videotaping what they did that day. Um, the optics on it is better. You don't have to worry about whether your, 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 uh, your reception is good that day or not. Mm -hmm. uh, we found a platform to upload video, which has been very, very helpful. So, so far, I think six of the artists have submitted some stuff that we've run on the show. So um, I would encourage you to just grab that iPad, shoot some uh, video of the, some of your stuff, mm -hmm. and you can talk while, while you're showing it. And let that be your presentation for the day. And that way you won't have to just do lives every day because lives every day will drain you. Right. So here's, here's, here's what's helpful to know. I get extremely stressed when food falls off my fork when I'm eating. <laughs> okay, so that gives us a real good look at who you are. That's crystal clear right there. <laughs> So, Poncho, we might as well stop talking. No, this is all very therapeutic because. No, 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 no. I'm saying we might as well stop trying to uh, 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 analyze her and, and fix it because she gets stressed when food falls off her fork. Yeah, but. Yes, I have to remind myself to breathe. It's okay if food falls off my fork. Yeah. Exactly. It's okay that food falls off my fork. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> now that's a little lighter than it's okay my feed dropped while I was giving a live presentation. Again, what I like about this process is that you, we, we can laugh at ourselves and let go of some of those things that, that we think actually define who we are. Uh, and yeah. sometimes those things really don't define who we are. Uh -huh. The you've been part of the community has been The volume is doing funny things. That's okay. It, it, it might be because we have a lot of streams open, but I will tell you oh, that the information that you've been part of this week has been fantastic. Uh -huh. Oh, that's good. So that's we're going to give you a break today. Uh, it's nice to see your face and see you just hanging in there. 
um, video, 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 video. So I just want to share this. Okay. I told you that I am, I'm not a painter. My, um, my passion around working with polymer clay is making canes. Mm -hmm. I have um, about 30 of those boxes. I don't know if I showed, I think I did, filled with canes that I make because I'm just loving making canes. Mm -hmm. I have stayed up all night long mm -hmm. making canes. I have been so tired at nine o'clock and sat down to start working with polymer clay and I'm wide awake and energized until three o'clock the next morning. Wow. So that has been my passion with the polymer clay. Mm -hmm. So doing this uh, creative, and I have, doing this creative quarantine is going to allow me to, um, to do some other applications with the clay. Mm -hmm. And one of them is a painting that I have seen a number of artists, some of who are, are colleagues of mine who do surface techniques rather than cane making. Mm -hmm. And one of the people who's um, part of the group I belong to, is, her name is um, Ellen Marshall. And she wrote this book on uh, polymer clay surface designs. Mm -hmm. So I bought this book six years ago. It's been sitting on my shelf. <laughs> I know where it's going. <laughs> because I'm, I'm into cane making, right? <laughs> um, so I picked it up this morning thinking, okay, let me look at, see what Ellen might offer as a suggestion or as uh, inspiration for me to start painting on clay. Um, so I'm, I, I think I'm going to start that this weekend. I have uh, I mentioned a uh, collaboration with uh, LaShawn. Mm -hmm. So I'm going through my um, boxes of canes that I have made. He wanted some that uh, are um, s stereotypically or typically my my work. So I have a uh, built uh, design. I call it the KDQ cane. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, so I'm going to spend some time tonight and tomorrow um making slices for him to send them off to him. Um, but maybe by Sunday I can start a painting project and on the clay and see, <laughs> see how I like it. See what comes out of it. See what happens with it. Sounds fantastic. Sounds fantastic. Well, uh, tell me how is your rest doing? Uh -huh. Oh, here. So, um, my rest is the way it has been for at least the last year or so. Mm -hmm. If I go to sleep at nine o'clock at night, um, I wake up at about 11 or 12. Mm -hmm. And I'm awake for a bit. I go back to sleep and then I'm awake at like 2.30. <laughs> and then I go back to sleep. At 2.30, I got one leg hanging off the bed, and I'm, I'm trying to put myself back up. <laughs> so I have, have had interrupted sleep for um, at least a year. Mm -hmm. I wake up several times during the night. Now, does that uh, help but, you or hurt you with your creative process? It does not inter doesn't interfere with me. Um, doesn't interfere. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Well, you know, you're one of our senior members of the group. So we want to ask you questions like that to make sure you're keeping up. I'm glad you shared that part about ang your anxiety <laughs> and the <laughs> architects that you've experienced. Yeah, yes, that. that helps a lot. Yeah, because, you know, sometimes we're just grinding through. We don't talk about that kind mm -hmm. of thing. So I was really glad yeah. when, when Ryan mentioned depression is part of the thing that he's been trying to challenge. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, when Frankie's talking about this, this 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 brain uh, uh right the whole thing he's going through so it really mm -hmm. makes you sit down and go poncho mm -hmm. well, <laughs> you just need to paint <laughs> right but kathleen you know as you're taking your break or or not being on if you're if you are going to do some work today put your camera on and and just let it record yeah this is something okay, we the last few I days i will do that i earlier today um 
I uh, was on a phone call interview with the local radio station. Rosemary and I oh, right. were asked to do an interview. So that was this morning. And then uh, the neck piece that I'm working on, I you know, I made the collar part yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, but it was too, I thought it was too long. So I made another one today shorter. Okay. Yeah, so that's how I spent. Uh, and I should have recorded it. I just, mm -hmm. I, I don't think that I should record. I won't, don't think about that as the tool for recording. I think of the recording as a diary, as a reflective thing and not as the working thing. But I will yeah, we found, make what sure. We found, what we found through this process, though, Kathleen, is just the reverse. Uh -huh. uh, being able to show the work. Uh, is another visual for not just you, it's a visual for the people that are watching and it'll stop you from having to engage the camera mm -hmm. and just show your work. And, and so it's uninterrupted. And what it's also going to do too is give you a reprieve for those days when your, your reception is not good. Mm -hmm. You know, because you're going to Well, be my reception should be good from now on because I have unlimited talk text and that. <laughs> oh, oh, oh well, well, will you go ahead with your bad self? <laughs> <laughs> and we are done with that, Poncho. <laughs> and so, yeah, what we've been doing the last few days, Kathleen, is that if artists are actually working in the studio, they just chime in. We put them in the background, like you see Karen back there working. Mm. We've been showing for last night. It was exciting. We had... Yeah. Uh, Five yeah. artists up working at one time uh -huh. and a little music playing. And all we did was just work. We didn't do any talking. We just tuned out and everybody worked. It was really and beautiful. Just, and then just swapped them out as it, as it went on. So we're going to try some more creative things. So uh -huh. it's going to be your work, your, your rest day. You have uh, done your first week of on your feet. So let's try to do some things next week to make it a little easier. Uh-huh. That's right. <laughs> A little, a little easier. Do some of those recordings. Do some of those recordings because you could do records. I mean, tell you what the recordings will do for you. It'll take the thinking out of it because you'll just be working as you usually do. So you're not thinking about your materials or your tools and things like that because you're already. But I am. But I, I am thinking about them. You know, I am thinking I about it as, as, yeah. Yeah. And that's, but what I'm saying is when you're just working, just turn it on as if it's not there. That's what I'm saying. Just turn it on while you're doing your usual work. Okay. And, and the then, thing happens also, Kathleen, is that when you're when you're filming what you do, you don't have to really explain what's happening. You're just right. providing a visual to what uh -huh. you're doing. I mean, right. watching you work your um your clay and your hands and the patterns that come out inside that clay, uh, some of that gets lost because of the reception. Mm -hmm. But that would be excellent in video because we would get a chance to see that. Right. So, mm -hmm. Just try it. Do a short one. Send it to me because you got to go through a couple steps. First thing, <laughs> you got to shoot the video. Then we got to get the video off of your device. Yes. Then you got to upload it. So you got to figure out how to upload. Yes. But so once you get that, boom. There you I, go. I can tell you the LaShawn yes, yes. So I, Again, you know, the, I the, it's the perfectionist in me. Like I said, you know, the food falls off my fork. That's not what's, that's not what is supposed to happen when you're eating. You're, the food is supposed to stay on your fork into your mouth, not fall off. <laughs> Karen, so anyway, I, was, it, I was wondering when you was going to chime in on that one, Karen. <laughs> well, Karen definitely don't have the food off the fork thing. I was definitely wondering when Karen was going to chime in on that because I know she heard it. <laughs> uh, Karen is one of my uh, restaurant hoppers, so uh, we don't have that food off the fork thing. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with it. We all have different levels of perfection and different things. So, yeah. But what I think the bigger message to people that are watching is we're not necessarily totally defined by those things. We always got room to say, you know, I'm not going to get that extra line out of my carpet because I just vacuumed. I'm not <laughs> going to get on my knees and pick the lint up that was left from the vacuum cleaner after I vacuumed the carpet. I but got I would. Okay, I, 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 I would too, Kathleen. I would too. I would too. You know what? I, I stop myself. I get up and I throw the, the vacuum cleaner in the closet because sometimes you can get so locked in your head of this level of perfection. I've even done there's this. Light, there's a double light switch in my house. 
So mm -hmm. it's a uh, tandem. So at one point, you know, you can turn the switch on, but if you're down at the other end, then you have to turn. The so to, if the two switches are not focused in the same direction. <laughs> it's annoying. It is annoying. I am with you, Kathleen. I know you. I have one. It is annoying. Wow. See, I'm going to leave this conversation feeling like a brand new man. <laughs> <laughs> well, Kathleen, thank you so much for sharing today. I'm glad you're getting a little bit of rest. Excellent first week. And we'll just check yes. in with you tomorrow and see what's happening. But try the video. Just try it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks, thanks for that suggestion because... Um, like I said, when I heard first heard about using the diary, I mean, using the uh, iPad as a visual diary, I was thinking diary like you write mm -hmm. in a notebook where you would just write some thoughts, but you wouldn't necessarily keep a record of your daily activity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's how I was thinking of the iPod, iPad and the video recording that it would be just a morning diary. This is what happened this morning or I'm waking up and this is what I'm going to do. And well, that's actually the smart not necessarily as a tool to record the steps or the work that's being done. But exactly. I'll use it that, that way. I think that's what happened is because our devices ended up being a little more substandard than what's required on this platform. Mm -hmm. The device is still very perfect for taking photographs, right. video. The daily diary piece is just a suggestion for people so they can kind of articulate what they're going through day to day. Mm -hmm. Well, a lot of artists haven't even had time to do that because they've been so busy working. Right. But what they mm -hmm. are beginning to do now is to show their process. And I think people are really interested in seeing that. And I think it will help us see the beauty in some of the work that might get lost in some of the live interviews. Yeah, yeah. Because yesterday it, it was it was a little harder um, to visualize the. I mean, we saw the we saw the neck piece, but it was a little harder to see the colors and the clay the the other ones that we were talking about. Another um, thing you can do too is that you can send me a thousand photographs, and I can put it into a video. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It could just be um a, 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 just take a ton of pictures from different angles of what you do. And I'll present it as a photo diary of what you're doing. Because I haven't shot any photographs in my studio yet. But I can do videos very quickly from those. So I'm just going to help you out with the visual part so we can take the pressure off of the live. So I, I you know, I have, so I have taken video. Um, again, it will, the, um, plat the share platform that you um, have been sending us mm -hmm. is, new, is new to me. It's new to all of us. Um, uh, oh, okay. So, so I'm familiar with a lot of other platforms, and, and I want to do it quick, you know. Uh, I don't if think the, if, the, if the Google search is not happening fast enough, my whole mind just goes. I got you. <laughs> well, we're trying to, we're, we're trying to find out what's going to make it easier, and uh, so we're just we're still experimenting, and, and everybody's in the same position with it. So, mm -hmm. brand new to all of us trying to get this information over. Yeah, that's okay. I'm just letting you know what it's like for me. <laughs> uh -huh. All right, Kathleen, you have a great okay. evening. All right, Kathleen, I'm trying Bye. to see what, what is Karen over here burning up. Yeah, Karen is doing her thing. We can really pull her in now so we can see what's going on. <laughs> All right, Kathleen. All right, Karen, what's what's going on? Talk to me. What are you doing, girl? Take your microphone off. Let me see if I can get you. I got you. You got me? Can you hear me? Yes, uh -huh. ma'am. You are live. Okay, good. Cool. I am um, right now. What I'm doing is I'm stiffening up my piece, and so you can actually put heat to your piece um, and stiffen it because I want to stretch it out really, really wide. So um, this is for face vessels um, that I'm doing. So um, well, Sean had asked me to make a face vessel so that um, he can paint on. I put the face on the front, and then he paint around the surface. So this is what I'm doing right now um, to create it. So I'm trying to give him enough canvas on the backhand side um, to work with it. So that is one. And um, Poncho, you want one? You hear me, Poncho? I can hear you, baby. You want one? Yes, if you wanted one. You want oh, one? You know, 
Yeah, I, so would, I would not turn down anything from Karen Clark. And see, you're closer to me than I think all the other artists are. Right. And so I could drop and yours. We can off get so our could... favorite little dish while, we, while we're doing the, the swap. Which one? You know which one. The okay. drunken noodles. Hey, oh. Hey, hey. oh, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> I love a drunken noodle. That's Very right. Noodle. Yeah, she can't just so, be over there dancing. Remember when we first started interviewing her? She was like, I'm not gonna be dancing. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. So what right now, what I am doing um is I'm stretching out this piece. But before I get started, y'all, I wanted to I'm gonna take you, I'm gonna take my camera off of the pedal stool and so that you guys can um see what's happening right now. So I have started to load up the kiln. So I did say I was gonna load it up from Friday and I am true to my word. Hey, so I'm gonna pick. I'm going to take the camera and we love so you guys can see. Okay, there you go. Okay, camera. And yeah, then I backside. Hit, I hit right. her mic. All and right. Then, and so done. She's going to her backside. I want you guys to see that. There I hope that go. you guys can see that. So uh -huh. this is what's happening right now. So sorry about my fingers in the camera. I'm loading them in. And so they're drying right now. So it's uh -huh. right now the kiln is actually at 200 degrees. This is the second tier. The third tier is underneath. And it actually has some things under there right now. And so um, what I do is um, let it knock off the chill in my studio because I do not have central heat. It allows it to keep warm in here. This will stay at 200 degrees for probably another 18 hours. So by the time I come into the studio, I'll load the rest of the pieces inside of the kiln. Mm. So I'm gonna flip my camera back over and walk you guys back. So it actually, so the angels are in there very though. They're hot in the studio right now. Ooh. So it's very hot. So sorry about that. So that is one of the things that's happening right now. Unfortunately, I can't take you guys over there completely because um and hang out there. One, because it's too hot. And the other reason is um it's too dangerous. It's too uh -huh. dangerous to put you over there. So that's why I walked you guys over there. Um, so I'm back at the will. So right now it's over there. It's chilling out. I'm sweaty because I walked over there and burst into a heat. <laughs> Have mercy. It is when I say hot. Mm, mm. Whoa. Okay. So yeah, it is hot over there. Man, y'all don't know. For real. Because so, so what's going to happen? Listen, this is the crazy part. So this kiln right now is going to go uh, go to uh, 1800 degrees. Um, I there is these are energy efficient windows. So when I walk in here um, today is Friday. So Saturday when I come in here Saturday morning, no today is Friday. So when I come in here Saturday morning, it's probably going to be about 90 degrees in here. So usually I wear very light clothes in here mm -hmm. on that day because it's that hot in here. So I have to open up all the windows, but um, I'm grateful for the um, the warmth. So usually I just wear a tank top and some um, shorts and then put on regular clothes um, when I go back outside. Uh -huh. Yeah, but yeah, it gets real hot. And when it gets up to um, uh, 2,200 degrees for the glaze fire, uh -huh. it's, about it's about 110 in here. Ooh. Wow. Yeah, so it is it's really, really hot. That just sounds in. good. Yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> so right now, what I'm doing for this piece is I'm actually stretching the um, the area out. This area here is the neck of the piece, mm -hmm. and this here is the body of the piece. So this is about five pounds of clay uh, being pulled. Um, I like to go bigger, but it takes more time and more concentration. This is like something that takes me about 10 or 15 minutes to put together if, uh, or less, but the larger the piece, the more time you're gonna focus on it. Um, so hopefully by the end, um, by while we're doing this, hopefully I'll be doing um, probably uh, 25 pounds, which are much larger pieces, um, mm -hmm. but they do, um, I'll, I'll prep them up in one studio uh, because I'll be teaching next week. So it gives me more space and um i'll put them together here 
So I'm just cleaning up the bottom so that I can stretch it. So uh, tell us about that torso against the wall. That torso. Okay. You ready? Oh, I just got the idea. Um, I'm doing, um, I have a pedal stool piece outside um, that one of my friends, Keith Ramsey, made for me. Um, and he makes he makes a quite a few of them, but I'm going to be doing the um, top part of that torso, probably a little bit of the um, the below the waist and down the leg, and so that it can stand up on that piece. But I'm still trying to figure out the textures that I want to put on it and the design. And I was inspired by one of um, my mentors and friends, Woodrow Nash. He uses um, a product um, like lace and dip it in, um, he dips it in slip, and then he lays it onto the body and it burns out to create the texture. So I wanna play with that a little bit. Um, and I also want to, um, my grandmother in her yard has a piece of driftwood and um, a title had come in my head called Sweet uh, Strange Fruit. And so I think I want to elaborate on that. And um, I'm gonna be bringing you a, uh, what do you call it? A um, cello, and I'm going to use one of my cellos. And I think I, uh, the name they kept speaking to me is uh, uh, "Souls of Freedom" or something dealing with soul and freedom put together. So I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do with that. But um, I think I have a direction of what I'm going to do. But it's going to take a. Those are going to be my um, all day projects where I'm in the studio from morning till night uh because very, hmm? i said very very cool sounds like you got a lot of concepts jumping around in your head despite all of the uh, production that you got going on over there yeah um well that well, all of the ideas come in my dreams um so i i sleep well but i don't uh when i'm sleeping uh i, I don't go to bed real late but I wake yeah, up no, every morning. Tell us your hours because, you know, everybody sees us all working, but we, they don't know what our hours are. Um, so usually I don't, um, I do production at night. I don't usually do faces during the nighttime. I usually um, do those in the day because I, I can, I'm able to see better um, because I like to work by natural light. Um, but I usually close, back in the day, I used to have the studio open until 12 to 3 o'clock in the morning. Now I got a little bit of sense and I close the studio up at about nine. Um, unless somebody says, hey, Karen, be on camera like you. Because I, I can't believe y'all left me out. I'm like, when I saw that, I was like, why did they leave me out? I would have been in the studio. I would have stayed. Oh, but, you um, say if you had popped back in, we would have put you right back in the feed. Yeah. I would say, uh -huh, I was eating From now time. on, that's the new rule. If you want to pop in, just pop in and we will, you won't have to say anything. We'll just put you a nice little square on the side of the screen. Hey, that sounds like a plan. So, yeah, we had a nice little thing last night. With that. Yeah, that looks so cool. It was so cool. So, um, I'm almost finished with this piece. I just got to stretch it out some more. So, and here, let me explain this to everyone. When you are working with clay and you, you're getting to know your clay, you don't know how much you can stretch a piece. Um, but what I'm doing right now, when I'm touching it on the inside and the outside, that's allowing me to feel the walls and the thickness of the walls. Um, with my walls, I like to leave them probably between a fourth or a half of an inch. Well, most of the time a half of an inch thick because I'm usually putting texture on it. If I am not putting any type of texture or carving or anything on there or faces, then it's about a fourth of an inch. But um, that is what I'm feeling the walls for to see how much I can do because I don't want to uh, carve into the wall or carve a hole into it because then it wouldn't, it wouldn't, it wouldn't have the purpose that I need it for. Got you. And then I'll change it. And then I have to change it to something else, which is fine too. It's like watching magic. Thanks. It's hard to talk at the same time while a You don't have to talk while you're doing everything. Yeah. Um, and I didn't have water on my hand because you need to have some water on your hand. Otherwise you stick. So when I'm throwing, I have to usually sock my arm up. So, uh, I can actually get in there. A lot of people ask me, um, do um, does this exfoliate your skin? <laughs> it can. 
It can, if it has what they call grog, which is just sand, um, it can exfoliate you, but I use a lot of shea butter at night um, to put on my, um, to put on my skin. Uh-oh, 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 come on. Yay. Artists have those scary moments too. I'm like, uh-oh, because they started wobbling. So if it started wobbling, that means I was sticking too tight to it. And uh, it was about to fall down. That would have made for great live TV. It would have, to let you know that and, and I, I, I am I, not perfect. I'm, I don't have any blooper reels yet. I'm so glad you don't have any bloopers of me. I'm tired of your bloopers and me in the bloopers. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm -mm. Well, I'll give you a blooper. Hey, 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 <laughs> that's hey. Not a blooper. That's just, that's just <laughs> you. <laughs> All that talk yeah. about drunken noodles got me hungry now. So I know that's right. You know what I had um, today? I've never had it before. It is from a Latin American place. It's chorizo with queso sauce. Mm. Um, and it, and, and the, the taste, you know, I'm still, I have to go look it up because it almost tastes like cinnamon inside of it. So mm -hmm. yeah, so I'm gonna have to look that up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to turn on the torch again, but I'll do it later because I need to get that shoulder and so that she can look voluptuous um in the top part you know i like to make my my bases a little busty in this area come on you don't want to do right today no it's not that it's me not wanting to do right that means that i'm getting too aggressive so i need to slow my roll <laughs> mm -hmm. and slow slow my roll a little bit so let me pick that up well doll let me go let you do your thing Okay, well, while you're letting me do my thing, I'm going to do it. Um, I am, uh, the other thing that I was going to say is uh, the next video that I do, um, it will have plenty of light. And I'm going to also add a story into um, the, um, the video. Because while I'm working, I'm usually, usually listening to one of my favorite friends from Manchester, England. She is a storyteller. Um, and she tells um stories from the continent and they are so good and so it allows me to travel so i um i hope that you guys like it as much as i do and i'll do it tomorrow sounds kind of fantastic to me darling oh i right, then all right sweetie <laughs> okay your thing will... and we will be chatting with you later i'm done i'm cutting this thing off put some plastic over it i'm going for dinner Ta -da! Here. Bye. So along the way, we have been talking about um, collaborations, and all of us are kind of preparing for collaborations. Um, namely, LaShawn Beal is spearheading most of that. He's been working very diligently on doing um, a series of pieces for us to have to start to work on. Um, he also, I sent a package out to five artists. Um, so they can have some, and Deborah Shedrick has shipped some things out. So we're all in the process of getting um, a few things to each other. Um, uh, Louise Cutler and I are also going to do a few things. Uh, but I wanted to show you um, just a little short video of um, some collaborations that me and LaShawn Duo have done before. At least you can have an idea of how that looks. Yeah, look at Louise. She just got uh, her piece. She's got her tube in the mail from me today. So, yes, yeah, she's getting ready to roll. And she's, uh, now, mind you, we sent her an empty tube so she can send the artwork to me. Because <laughs> she kept saying, I don't have anything. I don't have anything. What am I going to do? I'm like, look, let me just ship you a tube. So, uh, that's what's up. We are trying to get it done. So, let me show you this short video of a couple of collaborations that LaShawn and I have done together.
Hey everyone, it is day seven of the artist quarantine, and I'm about to ship off my pieces that I want to do collaboration with other artists with. So I wanted to share with y'all my stage of the pieces. This is one of them right here. Another one. I'm really curious to see how the other artists are going to take these and transform them into something else. I like that one, LaShawn. Oh, yeah. I'm going to have fun on that one. Okay. That's just a few of them. So listen, stay tuned. <laughs> okay. He just was like, boom. See ya. That's right. Got to <laughs> keep it moving. Got to keep it moving. So what you got? Oh, come on over. Let's see, where am I? You're everywhere. <laughs> I'm everywhere. Hold on, let's see. I want to make sure the sound is down. There we go. I am everywhere. You're in stereo. <laughs> well, basically what I've been doing over here is what you see now. Um, I've been kind of, and, and I, I've been, I've been doing the time lapse. So I'm going to send you that. So as you can see right here, I already laid in the uh, white gold. So on these pieces, I normally just I work with the um, the more precious metals. So, but I only do a. Oh, sorry about that. My kids calling. <laughs> so. Um, I only work with either 23 karat gold or things like that on my larger pieces. On my small pieces, I work with the Dutch metal, but on here, this is a white gold, but it's only a like a 12 karat white gold. And so you will get a little bit of tarnishing because it's kind of a, a mixture of white gold. And so what I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to actually um, do the size on this. And then here, I'm going to do a variegated blue on this portion and then on here, I'm going to actually use um, a little stencil and I'm gonna put a pattern in here and then I'm going to uh, use gold in that stencil once I do this. How is my sound? Do I sound okay, Concho? Sound is great. Oh, okay, okay. I tell you, that mic picks up really well. Um, so uh, I'm gonna do a stencil in here, but I was just over there trying to find my stencil and, uh, but I'm gonna do that. So right now I'm going to put, and I meant to do this earlier, but I'm going to put that um, that color in there. Um, so uh, not colored, but I'm going to go ahead and gild that, put down the size, um, and then hopefully, choo choo. And Poncho, I think I have a video of me doing some gilding. Yeah, I saw that video, but it needs editing. Oh, that one did? Yeah, at the end, you're having a conversation that's going time lapse. No sound. <laughs> okay, I'm going to have to relook. I'm going to have to look at that video because I, um, that might not have been the one that I wanted to put up there then. Okay. Right, that might not have been the right one. All right, so. Which one do we go to? Go to this one, the one at the outlet mall. Okay. All right, so the one in Loveland. See, that's what, you know, when you have children, you have to, you know, there's this just nonstop mom. So, <laughs> it's nonstop mom. You can see what my size, this is my size. Look at this. And look, I, that's making me hungry. No, no. 
it's all dry. It gets dried out. See that? But it's really sticky. And I, when I saw this, I was like, I bet you Poncho would like form some lips out of this. I thing. sure would. <laughs> and, then, and then gild on top of it. <laughs> and then gild the top of it. So I'm going to see because eventually I'm going to have to pull this out. Um, but the nice thing about sizes, is um, this is a water-based size. And I use two different sizes. This, I use a water-based size when I'm working on paper and thing, wood and stuff. But I use an oil-based size when I'm working on metal. Okay. So it's a totally different size that mm -hmm. I use when I'm working on metal. So this right here. And I put down the red base coat, which you see here. And I put down some little black lines to kind of guide me. Uh, because uh, those lines I'm going to want in later because they're like the little folds in the outfit. And the other thing, I don't like to co cover everything sometimes. Sometimes I cover everything and sometimes I don't, but I actually like to see some of the reddish color peek through. I do. I'm one of those people. I like to see the reddish color peek through. And um, I also like to... <laughs> In the midst of me doing these, I also like to go ahead and create several. Um, when I'm doing these, I like to do, um, if I can, I'll turn on like a time lapse so that I can do that as well. So I'm actually going to be time lapsing this as well as while I'm doing this because, and the reason I'm doing that is because I already have this set time lapse mostly and i want to just put together the full video well so, it sounds fantastic i think everybody will love to see it yeah so that's what i'm going to be doing because i i do a lot of work on it off off camera and so um but i still do a lot of the time lapsing um so once i get the full video because poncho is like louise send me content and <laughs> I got I a question the here. From, I the uh, whole thing, and that's why when I sent that one thing to you, I'm like, okay, let me just send this. But actually, that one is also part of a full video. All right, I got a question I got to answer. It says, what tool do you all use to record and transfer video? Right now, we are relying on whatever devices we have, whether it be iPhone, phones, galaxies, iPads, video cameras, and then we're uploading them through a platform in order for us to um, to start transferring this video. So we're trying a couple of different things. We're doing a real guerrilla approach to this because none of us are professionals, but we are trying to document our work as best as we can. Mm -hmm. I really liked um, Ryan's work. That was one of the pieces he was working on last night. Yeah, he started working with that piece um, really well on the first show when he was uh, trying to get started. So right, got right. momentum. I'm just waiting for everybody else to start sending me some photographs. We're going I to remember him artists. talking about uh, doing some freehand. Mm -hmm. So I thought it turned out pretty amazing. It was it was really cool watching him use all of the um, stenciling things that he had talked about. Right and spraying through lace and um, doy paper doilies and pans. So uh, do you use one to size on that? Or do you have another brand that you use? Huh? Do you use one to size uh, uh, paper, uh, I mean, um, water-based size, or is there another? Uh... I actually use, here, I use the uh, the Mona Lisa. Mm -hmm. So I order all of, I this kind of stuff I order online because I use so much of it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, like, I, 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 you'll see me using this one right here, this Mona Lisa piece. Mm -hmm. You'll see me using this, but I have a ginormous one. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I was just using this when I was doing the little ones because I had it. So I'm like, oh, I'll use this because uh, this is a red base coat. So I'll use that. But I have, like, my size is in a re really large container, and I pour it in here. Mm -hmm. uh, and I use these because I love these Tupperware containers um, because this kind of stuff dries out and the oil-based size dry out too. 
So mm -hmm. I try to use Tupperware containers because they seal well. And with this being a water-based size, I can um, put water in it and just kind of bring it a little bit back to life and still use it. So that's what I'm doing. And then I had one other brand that I had ordered. It's still over there because it, it was just too watery. It was too watery. And it's interesting. I got two other questions I got to deal with. One is what platforms? This is platform we're trying to use now. It's called ShareFile. We've been using that for the week. Allows us to move some files pretty quickly uh, for all 12 artists. So that's what we've been using so far. I uh, hope that answers both of your questions because um, that seems to be a question that a lot of you have. <laughs> but I was and, then, and we've been having our share of challenges. We've tried WeTransfer, mm -hmm. tried um, some other platforms, but Google. We, tried, we tried the Google. We tried Google. They have a lot of them have size limitations, and mm -hmm. some. Of these videos are one gigabyte, two gigabytes, four gigabytes, seven gigabytes. Right. So we need to be able to move larger files um, and then compress them when we actually do our light editing because we're not doing anything serious editing here. We're just uh, making it kind of as the artists shoot them. We want to show and them. storage. Storage is a big deal. Oh, storage is a real big deal because trying to transfer these files from one computer to the next computer. Uh, it's a bit of a challenge, but that's what we're faced with with trying to broadcast for 30 days. So it's not just painting and creating, it's learning all the other technical things it takes to keep this thing running. So mm -hmm. we're doing so far one week down. The next week will present a whole lot of different things. <laughs> one week down. You know what's interesting? Um, when I how I started gilding on my artwork, because it used to be very simplistic. My pieces were very simplistic um, when I first started the series. And I really started working in acrylic um, after I was pregnant with my second son because I didn't want to work in oils and I didn't want to work in pastels because they want to breathe in all of that. Um, and so I started working in acrylics when I started this. And so this was a very simplistic series. And it kind of took me back to my fashion illustration background where I was a sort of... Um, just getting rid of everything that wasn't necessary or everything I didn't feel was necessary for the piece. And so that's when I started doing, working in this. And then um, when we went to, um, when we went to the Louvre, we had gone to, to France and we went to Paris and we went to the Louvre during this series, when I was uh, when I first got when I started this series, and we went into I think it was the Italian Renaissance section, and they had uh, it was just full of gilding. You know, a lot of the art was gilded, and so I thought, oh, you know what? When I come home, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put gilding on here. Now, mind you, I had never gilded anything, didn't know anything about, didn't know anything about gilding at all. And so I come home, and here I'm working on watercolor paper. So I come home, I get out my watercolor paper, I'm, you know, I'm going to gild it. I got all the supplies, um, no base coat, not, none of that kind of stuff. Just got all the supplies. And so I started putting down, I did the painting and I started putting down size and putting down size and watercolor paper does what watercolor paper does. It absorbs everything. So it just kept absorbing everything. Everything I put down, it kept absorbing all of it. And so I had to kind of rethink how I was doing this. So I, I went and I got, uh, I'm like, I need to do some research. I need to do some more research. See, because sometimes as artists, we don't do all the research. We just jump right in. It's like jumping off the cliff. And so after I did the research, I realized that um, you need to put down a base coat, especially on watercolor paper. Absolutely. On watercolor paper, because watercolor paper is just going to suck up everything. So, exactly. you know, you got to, it's a, you, uh, gilding works best on a non porous surface. Mm -hmm. so yeah. And I'm like, actually yeah. Working out, hey, Deborah. Yeah. So, yeah, but I'm, I'm loving the way you're working the gilding on those pieces. It's, mm -hmm. nice. so, so, what size is that piece? Is that on, is that on watercolor paper you're doing right now? 
Yeah, this is on watercolor paper. This is actually from, this is actually cut from a 40 by 60. Mm -hmm. and probably what I do is I cut, I, I'm able to cut three, I think three out or two out of a 40 by 60 watercolor paper. And mm -hmm. then I create these. And so I, so I, I'm going to actually create, because the first one, the original one that I did this way sold, it's like the first thing that sold, because there it was a triptych. But the one that I did similar to her, where she was holding the bowl, it wasn't above her head. So actually, I'm going to do an entire series of one holding the bowl, one above her head, and then one on the ground. So I'm going to do three of these particular ones. Um, so I think it'll be a lot of fun to do. Cool. I just It's like I told my husband, I just hate cutting the paper. I know. That's something about cutting a, a a large sheet of paper. I know that's the biggest thing with this is I really hate cutting cutting the paper because it's so large. It's just you know it, it it is what it is though. So, but hey, Deborah, good to see you. I need to unmute. Sorry. No, you. I was holding it down until you got here. You have to unmute. Is she still muted? She's yes, she's still muted and, and smiling. <laughs> no. Okay. You hear me? Yes, we can hear you, darling. <laughs> so anyway, I just got back from um, my parents' house to see what they had in their refrigerator. <laughs> so I can get in there. So my dinner tonight will be spaghetti. Friday, we've made it past our first week. How is how's things coming along in the studio? Do they have I'm happy about that. <laughs> so um do we, do we get do we can I get a day off? Yeah, you get no. no you don't get a day off. You, you if you submit some video, you would have a day off. Were you? Did you work on some video, uh, Deborah? Remember we we talked about yeah. it. She haven't had time been, for no video. I've been thinking about it, but this weekend I am going to do a video, and on Monday I am going to try to send it to you. So that, that means, so that means you got to broadcast on Saturday and Sunday for a break on Monday. But remember, Deborah, okay. when you turn the, when you turn off today, when you tune out today, just keep put your video on so you can video what you what you're finishing up on. You see it when she's I gotta learn how to work. I gotta learn. I gotta learn how to work the video first. Uh, just get one of them sons of yours to show you how to do it. You know, you take the iPad. You got an iPhone. It works the same as your iPhone. You were one of the first artists okay. I knew had, a, had an iPhone, a fancy old iPhone, because I don't have an iPhone. I still have. Yeah, he doesn't have an iPhone. Really? I have the Samsung. No, the, the same. The Samsung Nine is my tool of choice, and it takes better video than most devices. Whatever. Some of the videos that I have aired on the show shot with the Whatever. Samsung 9. Say what you want to say, can't haters. You can't FaceTime. Say what you want to say, haters. But the Samsung 9 is a nice camera. <laughs> anyway, it works the same as when you do a video on your iPhone. Okay. Right? You press the camera, bloop. Okay. You press the video, bloop. Okay. And and you're not limited. This is going to be some video. And this is and you're not limited. <laughs> you're not limited to just do your videos on your um, iPad. You can also do them on your phone. And from her laptop. I don't have any more storage on my phone. It mm -hmm. barely she works. Her, she has it's, her laptop. Just... <laughs> oh God, y'all! I'll get into more trouble with y'all. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> So show us what you've been working on. Can you just give us a show and tell? 
of the pieces that you started and finished already. Yes. Let's do that. Let's see what the board got today. Let's see. These pieces are there. Huh? Just do a show and tell. Can y'all oh. see? Oh, I love that. Yeah, nice. Mm -hmm. So this is going to a gallery. But it's one of my pieces. Just make, like sure, just make sure you photograph it before you send it. I'm gonna do that tomorrow too. It's a lot. It's a lot to do tomorrow. tomorrow. <laughs> oh, it's a lot every day. So um, I bought a canvas pad, and I thought it, it was more you know, like the paper canvas, but this is actually canvas. So this is the next one I'm doing. I haven't decided if this is a man or a woman. So what is it? What do y'all think? Looks like a man to me. And looks like a woman to me. <laughs> Thank you. So I guess you're up well, to two, two to one. Say that again. It's up for grabs then. <laughs> OK, so when I finish. When I finish it, um, I'm gonna show show it to you again, and then you can tell me if it turned into a man or a woman because I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, so it's a man paper night, y'all. And uh, since the second week, I, I hope to have something new um, on Monday also. See, I need a day off so I can plan. It sounds like you're leaving the whole weekend blank. It sounds like you're leaving the whole weekend open. <laughs> she sounds like she's trying to, 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 to get out of the doctor for the weekend. You can't blame the girl for too long. <laughs> you can't blame a girl for trying. <laughs> So, no, tomorrow, as heart. a matter of fact, tomorrow and Sunday heart. are longer hours. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow's what? Saturday and Sunday are longer tomorrow. hours. Right. What'd she say? Why are you messing up a good thing? These hours are fine. No, <laughs> longer These hours, hours are fine. Saturday and Sunday. We start a little earlier. Yeah. All you got to do is do your little part and you'll be fine. That's right. We started some new stuff. I ain't say you got to be on for longer hours. I just need you to do something. You ain't going to do no, you have done no videos, no photographs. So, you see, I'm always having to be on live because I haven't sent anything in yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there you go. You all I don't mind being on live. I don't mind. And, <laughs> and some of us are putting it in whether they live or not. <laughs> there you go. Who is that? LaShawn? Uh, LaShawn Beal, that's right. Anyway, you know what? LaShawn is all over the place. That's right. LaShawn is he's 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 just doing his thing. LaShawn is the is the man of the hour. Well, Miss Shedrick, I guess since we will, I'll be the tortoise. We will uh check in with you tomorrow and see what you're doing. Uh you didn't show any of the pieces. You talking about you know what I mean? Yeah, you. I didn't. You didn't show the pieces you worked on that you did as samples early in the week. Oh well, that'll be that'll be next week. I, they'll be all finished. Oh Lord, she must have sent them to a gallery already. No, I haven't. I gotta take. <laughs> I gotta take the photographs. Have you been recording them, Deborah? No, she she's got a one track mind. She hasn't recorded a thing. I am the tortoise of the group. No, you're not. <laughs> you are not the tortoise of the group. Far from it. Really? As a matter of fact, well, uh, yeah, we 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 will name we the. That's some people. <laughs> we already got a person in the tortoise position. They just don't realize they're in the tortoise position yet. <laughs> and oh it ain't God. you. It ain't you. Oh. You're doing fine, Deborah. You're in like slot number. Three. You're in slot number three or four right now, as far as productivity. Wow. You said wow. So anyway, yeah. I so bid you farewell. 
We will. Uh, we can do an overview of those other pieces tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And start shooting your video okay. as soon as possible. Start shooting your video, Deborah. That's okay. your. That's your. That's your task. That's your task. It's only going to make life easier for you. You've been one of the artists that have been alive every day since we started. Mm-hmm. If LaShawn Beal can slip into Everybody the Everybody hasn't been live? No. Hey, LaShawn. LaShawn has... Uh, LaShawn sent me some videos. Okay. You're doing Hello. fantastic, Deborah. You keep on striding. The work looks fantastic, Deborah. Thank Shepard, you. you are one of the uh, the dynamos of the group. I think you could deserve a lighter day, so we're gonna give you a lighter day today. Only today. Be back in position tomorrow. <laughs> Be back in the queue tomorrow. That's because people are, people are looking okay. looking at your work. People love to have you on. Oh, that's so nice. And we got to catch you while you're like a little that lady. Lady. Say that again. You're low. Uh, you're, you're not actually the old lady of the group either. So you got to get your role <laughs> right. We have, uh, we have two other seniors on the group. And I think they got you beat by quite a bit. Uh-huh. So, so gotta, they call me gotta, a senior. You got to pick your role. <laughs> No, you probably, I, you I, I you, the same age. Uh, I didn't age. call you a senior. You keep talking about how how where you are. I'm just reminding you that we have two older seniors in the group. I'm trying to embrace my reality. And that reality is what? I'm a little crazy. I'm a little bit rock and roll. Yeah. I'm a little bit, uh, <laughs> how did it go? Okay, so you just like the rest of us on the short bus. <laughs> oh, Lord. Uh, oh, God. Uh, message, and we can break the fact that we're all on the short bus. From, uh, from, I can't tell if this is a miss or a miss. Uh, All that Matt says, yes, I love Deborah's work in process. Mm-hmm. So there's one of your fans. If oh, already thank you. Oh, Deborah's got plenty of fans. Uh, we got another one here that says, "Nice Deborah." Uh, Poncho, you and I are forever pushing the same. Hey, queen, you know, God. That's what happens when you got two people on the queue. <laughs> that's on it. I'd rather you be on it than not on it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Deborah, should we? We're gonna let you slide tomorrow. We will see you tomorrow. See ya. Slide, slide, slippity slide with Deborah. Now, LaShawn, uh, what's happening with you today, brother? You are muted. Or oh, am I? Let's no, see. no, you good. You good. You good. I, okay. I, I got you. I got you, LaShawn. I got you. <laughs> Thank you, Louise. Uh, I'm, I dedicated this first week to doing majority of my pieces for collaborations. Uh, I have a few more to get done, but this weekend is the weekend, or this week I should say has been a week to get to accomplish all that. Um, so I'm wrapping up a few more pieces and, uh, and just trucking along here, trucking along. I'm excited about what's going to come up next week. Uh, as far as the things uh, I plan are, on creating. Are, no, no, this week. Uh, it actually, we are in day eight. We have already begun the next week. Oh, yeah. Well, there <laughs> you have it. Well. <laughs> 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 it's in day eight, not seven. <laughs> so, hey, I'm just working it, brother. That's all. You know, trying to keep up. Trying to keep up. That's all. <laughs> Well, you're doing a great so, job, man. I can't wait for these to get uh, in people. So you've already hit the mail, then. The pieces have already been shipped. Yeah, I've shipped out some pieces already. I have a few more uh, to go, uh, obviously, because I got a few more images I need to get completed to put in their packages. Mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah, 
yeah, you should have yours, um, uh, you know, sometime next week. Louise, yours will be shipping out probably I'm jump on yours uh, right away. Monday. I'm jumping on yours right away because that adds to both of our account at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what I'm going to do, LaShawn, is that when they come out the package... I'm, I'm excited about it, man. I'm having fun. I don't know about you guys, but I'm having fun. You know what, Poncho? I think you can work and talk. Um, I'm I, Right now, my account's ahead of everybody. And? You need to catch up. I can take. I can talk all I want. I'm just. A, I'm just saying. <laughs> this is not I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Fine art show. Get you get back over here. Get off. Get at your table. And you got a ways to go to. <laughs> get back over there. Get back over there. What table. is that? Yeah, Twenty-four hours. Louise, a Louise, is that your latest piece? Yeah, uh, <laughs> she rocking though. She rocking though. Nice. You know what else she did? I don't care what, uh -huh. don't care what Poncho no, said. I, I, you know what? I'm at I can't wait to see those small pieces. <laughs> <laughs> have, you, have, you, have you shot the small pieces yet, Louise? Huh? Have you shot the small pieces yet? I'm gonna take pictures of them. Let me finish them up today. I'm gonna take pictures of them. I got um. Uh, Let's see. Let Look, I took it off. Oh, that's pretty cool. That's what confused Frankie. You should have saw Frankie. <laughs> oh, I know. What time are we starting? Wow, tomorrow? that's nice. That's a question, but from one of our followers, what time do we start tomorrow? Tomorrow, Saturday. So, um, what did we do I mean, last? Last do we want to do evening or do we want to do early? You're gonna do a shift it back to early. Okay, so then let's start. Um was it four o'clock? Yeah, so that would be two for me. Right. Okay. Four o'clock right. Eastern Standard Time. We will be starting tomorrow. Queen Mother Goddess Opulence Ra. And I don't two know. Mountain. No, no, we don't go by mountain time <laughs> over here. She's the only person from mountain time. I think the majority of the people on this show. <laughs> uh, I think you got, uh, well, you're not even, even LaShawn's in a different time zone than you, right? Hey, hey, two o'clock mountain. Yeah. Mountain. We're going to switch up. Yep. We, can, we can go mountain. <laughs> it's going to be two o'clock mountain time. That's right. Yeah. I, and I'm, I'm going to add some more because I want it stiffer. So I don't know if I'm going to resin it or if I'm going to put some more of that. Um, Got gack on it. Okay, looking yeah. good. Because I want it stiffer, and then I was looking today. I was looking to see what piece of wood I'm going to put it on. So, and I got this when we were talking to Karen. When I said, "Oh, Karen, send me one of those um, heads," you know, the ones from her garden. Mm -hmm. And I and I thought, "Oh wow, I'm going to make because I have so much leather." So I'm like, "I'm going to make a leather head." Well, that's that a movie? I, I just I just love the face that uh, Frankie did <laughs> yesterday when you pulled that out. He was just like he was like, what is that? And then he said he said he had a poker face, and we were thinking, no, you don't. No, he said he doesn't have a poker face. I'm like, you're absolutely right. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, yeah, I'm looking for, I, I you know, it's like I'm looking forward to doing whatever with this. So I might make a couple more. That's Maybe. what I was about to ask. Are you going to do any more of them? Because you need yeah. to have at least six of them. I, I need at least six? <laughs> yeah, you need six. <laughs> Why? Because I have to start training. Yeah, yeah, we need to have something for the people to buy. You know? <laughs> don't, don't, don't limit it to just one or two people. Oh, okay. I'll have to see. So, Louise, don't, when don't stop being like... When you're in this position, how do you switch them around? Switch what around? You were switching pictures last night. Oh, oh, just like we do everything. Um, you just grab it and put it in. Grab it and put it in. What do you mean grab it and put it in? Okay, go to me. Okay, go to go to me mm -hmm. and drag me where you are. 
go to you and drag you where you right. are. Put your put your cursor on me and drag me to where you are on the screen. Oh, da, 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 you da, know what? Da, you da. know what, Poncho? I'm gonna have to. Uh, I'm gonna have to. We gonna have to go back into class or something. No, I got it now, girl. I'm a fast learner. I'm I'm a, I'm an old dog <laughs> learning new tricks. <laughs> I don't know if I teach you everything, you won't need me anymore. That's all right, babe. I share everything I got with you, so. <laughs> no, I said if I teach you everything, you won't need me. No, nah, I always need you, uh, <laughs> darling. You, you are stuck with me. Oh, I love that, LaShawn. I love I love that hair. Why, <laughs> why won't LaShawn send me that one? <laughs> I want one with a sleeve on it. Hey, LaShawn, did you send me one with a sleeve on it? With a what? Oh, well, is yeah. that a sleeve on it? That's got like a sleeve on it or something. It does. It looks like yeah, a sleeve. yeah. Did you send me one of those, man? Of course. I need. Yeah, I sent you. Uh, I sent you a couple of them. Oh, Suki, I'm starting to know as soon as they come out the package. Am I yeah, yeah. sending me a couple? I think everybody just send me one thing. One. And I'll shoot a before and after picture of it, Lashawn. Super. Super, oh, that'll yeah. work. John, you're the one. You're the one that kind of encouraged me to do do these. Do um, remember because I, I talked to you. You kind of encouraged me to do. Um, is that clay or glaze, Louise? Oh, that's uh, that's wow. leather. It's leather. It's a piece of leather that I shaped, formed. So yeah. Snap! I, did I tell you about that? What? Ah, yeah. Did I tell you about doing oh, the wet leather? You, you had told me when I was doing the other leather, you were like, Louise, wet it and form it and, and scrunch it up. And I, I thought about that over and over again. And then I was like, you know, I really want to do a face. And so I started like going online and looking up stuff because I'm like, I know I could form it, but mm -hmm. it's a, with this particular texturized leather, it doesn't form like just the regular leather. <laughs> Because it's got, it has something on it, um, and so right. I, I used some glue and some other stuff. I just played around with it until I got what I wanted. <laughs> really? Very, now, very cool. Yeah. Well, yeah. think about how Poncho is working on his pieces. He was using gel medium, mm -hmm. so th that's a good substance to use. I know. I really like that. And and Poncho did the uh, Poncho did the uh, the alcohol thing you told me to do. Okay. Yeah. Last night, I was like, "That's what Lashawn just told me to do today." <laughs> so I was gonna do, I was gonna do that poncho, and then you did it as your what you call it. Well, that's okay. I mean, you 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 got to do it the Louise way. You I know. I'm going to I'm going to try because I told Lashawn I want to do some, and then I want to put my image in it. Right. So I'm going to do that. I think it'll be fun to do those. Cause those are oh indeed uh -huh. it will be once you start playing with that you're gonna be like oh man <laughs> you, you're gonna be like a kid you're gonna be like a kid man you want to put alcohol and everything i'm gonna be like oh my gosh this is just way too messy <laughs> no it's not it's one of those things no it's not alcohol and you just let it dry that's the only thing you gotta do is let it let it leave it let it do i know yeah. but i gotta i definitely gotta clean off my other table to do it oh yeah because it's a flat it's a flat Right. Technique. Yeah, so I'm gonna clean off. I'm gonna clean off my other table because um, mm -hmm. I'm almost done with this one. I'm almost done with her, um, and since I've done her, I want to do two more to go with her. So um, I'll be. I'm gonna finish her up tonight. Well, she's I'm, looking good with that white gold on it. Oh yeah, I love that. I'm about to put a blue variegated metal on there now. Okay, that should be really hot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna put a blue variegated metal on it, and then and then I just have to finish the apples. But I'll finish those at, later on today. So, so, are those apples around here? Well, they're either apples or leaves. Or cherry, apples are really large cherries. I thought they were flower petals. I did the other one. With, the other one had really uh, had flowers. The original one had flowers, but hers. This one has more. Um, it's such an abundance of apples, they're falling out. Very cool. Oh, okay. So she's going to let them apples sit her on the head and everything, huh? 
No, no, no. She's got the thing on her head. So they, the apples are missing oh. her. She's very graceful. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Only LaShawn would it. ask that question. <laughs> <laughs> You're so violent. She's very, gra- she's very graceful. It looks, it looks beautiful. Thank you. It does. It does. Yeah, wow. I enjoy doing it. Louise Cutler is turning it on. That's right. That's right. I'll have one or two. Look, I'll have I'll have one or two pieces. <laughs> You're gonna be better than that. <laughs> well, once I get these done, and then I'm doing the collaborative pieces tonight. I mean this weekend. So I can send them all out. Sounds good. You got an envelope coming from me? LaShawn has an envelope coming from me. Louise, yours is just going to be straight pencil work like you did on yours. And LaShawn, uh, ours are going to be pencil too. Oh, you're just going to do some pencil, huh? Okay. You made me have paint on the one I'm sending you. No, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm going to do, I'm going to paint on top of yours. Look at us talking about some where's the apple tree. I tell you people. That's your sister. <laughs> I'm Linda <and> Johnson. <laughs> you know, I talked to her today. She said, Louise, I must be crazy. She said, I watch you all all day long. She said, <laughs> I'm not even an artist. And I'm sitting up here watching you all all day long. You That's all- okay. <laughs> we like that. I said, well, that's all right. So, John. How many pieces do you think you yes, prepped? Sir. How many pieces do you think you prepped? I prepped uh, 20 so far. Okay. Well, it sure seems like it's like 100. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's been, it's you, you been 20. Chance, yeah. You didn't get a chance it, to see it, the video. I played a video of the uh, collaborations you and I did. Mm-hmm. Oh, did you? I you was looking at something. Do you want to see it again? I saw, I, I had those videos. Yeah, put it on. Definitely. All right. You got to look at the screen now. This is a, this is a rerun. <laughs> this is a, this is a, for a, okay, a, sure. a, creative, a creative quarantine rerun. Yeah, man. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad you put that together because then, you know, allow some of the other artists to see the possibility of doing collaboration pieces. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to be showing that on and off. We also had uh, Mr. Murray submit some pieces, his final, some of his finished pieces. Mm-hmm. And so we played that a little earlier today, too. Oh, great. So along the way, we will be creating individual videos of each artist and their creations. We're just beginning to start putting those up. So stay tuned. This week, we'll be posting finished works by some of the artists. That's great. 
All right, y'all. I think I'm going to let y'all all take a small break. I got another little thing I can show. But y'all. Oh, wait, let me do the guild. I'm going to guild this. Okay. So you can see me guild this part. I just want to see if I want to use this metal or not. I might want to use something deeper, of a deeper color. There's one. Oh, wait, I forgot to do my, and a video. So this one I can hold in my hand. It's not like the white gold. Because this one's thicker and it won't tear. The um, white gold and the regular gold will tear. I don't have to be so easy with it. And it's less expensive, so I don't have to be sparing. Sort of like with your paint, Poncho. Yeah, but that's much more expensive. <laughs> yes, it is. It is. It is. Especially now. It didn't used to be as expensive as it is now. Oh, well, yeah. The gold price went through the roof. Huh? Yeah. It's Well, this is just, this is just a Dutch metal, mm -hmm. but it's a lot more expensive than it used to be. Okay, I was very impressed by your collection of leaf. Oh yeah, I, I, need, to, I need to drop by your house one day when you're y'all off getting some food. <laughs> I do a lot, and I like to make sure I have. Um, I like to make sure I have a variety of colors. So, like, some people don't care, but I like to have a variety of different colors. Now, I thought you said you were going to do that blue. It is a blue. Oh, you okay. Uh, yeah. no, I can't see from this angle with that. You're good. You're good. Oh, I see it. Yeah, nice. Yeah, so there's the blue is in there. But I'm going to look. Um, I thought I had a whole packet right there, but it didn't have a whole packet. So I'm going to have to dig through my colors and look for another set of blue. So go ahead and show your video and then I'll, um, you'll see when I'm actually, all done. It's, it's actually, it's LaShawn. Oh, well, go ahead and show LaShawn's video. Yeah, I'm going to show my video. <laughs> show LaShawn's video. All righty. Hey, everyone. I'm back. I decide which directions I want to go as far as doing. I just like that blue. A little color in here just to uh, take up some space. I don't want to do too much to it because, you know, again, someone else is going to be working on this. And uh, I want them to uh, have the space they need to do their thing. Pancho, when you get your pieces, I want to know, is it easier to work with the color 
uh, around the uh, the object or without the color? I think it's going to be easier with. Yeah, I, that's what I kind of suspected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe it's just to give them a little something to work on. I came across some more video of us doing the collaboration in your studio. I don't think, I don't know if you have it or not, but I'm gonna forward that to you uh, between some now video? and tomorrow. Yeah, if you got some video, send it. Yeah. Look at Louise. She's working at foil, at yes, leafing. Yeah. So can you see the blue now? It looks great. Yeah, I see it now. It's fantastic. Yeah. I see the little swirls in it. Yeah. Go back in and put the lines in. So very good. Louise, what lines are you putting into it? You mean like the design in the dress or what? You know, like where the folds are. Oh, okay. I'll put the fold lines back. That's why I put some of the little black lines in because then I I know where my fold lines are. Okay. Yeah. But now I'll have little metal leaf all over my studio. I love her. You know, um, you got to know your tools and your paints. We got Ryan Murray in the queue. This is the yellow I was using, which is a heavy body yellow. It's very opaque, which means that it's really dense. This is another yellow that is, this is really expensive, expensive paint right here. Cadmium yellow, medium. This is a, a yellow medium, but it's, not top grade like this one is, and uh, but it costs a fraction of what that costs. So it has its place in what what I'm working on, and that uh, I just need a paint to take up space, and not necessarily for grow effect. In other words, I don't need the brilliancy of color.
another finished one. LaShawn is cranking them out. Louise, I'm just trying to do my part. <laughs> your brother, I think it's your brother that's doing all that work over there. The dual. Yeah. The dual. yeah. <laughs> two of them working all the time. <laughs> that's why he's out there. That's how he's cranking it out, Poncho. How you doing down there, Ryan? <laughs> Pretty good. Um, I'm really feeling this one. Oh. I am uh, painting on a panel tonight, hey. which I have never done. Hey, Ryan. Hey. <laughs> Ryan's you know, like, Ryan, Ryan keeps it real simple. He's like, hey, what's up? <laughs> and every now and then he'll peek his face down hey. so we can see he's not just a fair yeah. cut. Uh, I think we have here. a nose, though. I think we see a nose. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there he is. There he is. <laughs> he is a real person. He is not just a first leave. I don't know. I'm like, I thought he goes care for people. I don't think Ryan comes out. <laughs> Ryan, have you been going out meeting the world? Um, only to get groceries. Ryan's like, no. <laughs> Just for what I need and back in the house. Yep, that's right. Oh, look, here's the original one. That's my first one. My little lady. You see it, Poncho? Nice. Yeah. 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 That's a small piece. Oh, no, 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 no. That's, that's just a journal. It, this one was the same size as that one. It was the same size as that. Same. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, this is just on a journal. Nice. Cool. Yeah. And well, the gotta... apples are in a basket. That makes sense. No, no. those are flowers. All <laughs> oh, those are flowers. <laughs> <laughs> try to keep up with Sean. Just try to keep up. Yeah, these are, <laughs> these are flowers. <laughs> those, I'm not sure if they're apples or not. <laughs> well, we got right. a video. Uh, I'm, doing like, I'm doing like in the Bible. There, It's a fruit. <laughs> oh, okay. It's a fruit. <laughs> But the other one, apples, <laughs> Linda. Mm -hmm. Got a nice close up of uh, Ryan painting his one of his earlier pieces.
Ryan, you have a question. Ryan, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Um, it says, um, she says, um, is that person on the light pole you're painting the other day? What is the story behind it? The young girl that you're painting. Um, yeah, well, I had, um, I had a four hour Zoom meeting the other, well, this is the gist of it. I had this four hour Zoom meeting uh, for work the other day and we were talking about diversity and inclusion. And one of the exercises uh, that the facilitator had everyone do was to Google cute baby and count how many images uh, popped up before you saw a black baby. And it really resonated with me. So um, the, the girl with the balloon kind of just kind of spawned out of an interest to take that, to, to keep going with that. So I did girl with balloon and then started to paint the first black girl with the balloon that I saw. Pretty much it. So exactly how long did it take before you saw a black baby? Well, I want to say 25 to 30 seconds of nonstop scrolling. Wow.
So Ryan, what are you using? Acrylic? Yep, uh, um, I'm painting on a panel, which I have never done before. And what kind of panel is it? It's like a uh, wood masonite, I think. Okay. Picked it up at the store the other day. Looks really nice. Thanks.
Okay, Brian, you got another question. It says, uh, that's a nice picture. Is the black girl coming out of the water? Thank you. And yeah, basically, um, back when we could do in-person doctor's appointments, um, in therapy, I used to make collages. And those collages would, some of them turned into like full-scale stencils. Uh, this is one of them uh, that I'm choosing to freehand. And it was like a, a yoga ad that I cut and pasted on this uh, beauty ad with a black woman in it. Oh, okay. That's nice. Thank you. That is really shaping up nicely, Ryan. Thank you. You are the man. This is the favorite one, uh, my favorite one that I've done in quarantine so far. So uh, give me a rundown of what your first week was like. Um, Emotionally and otherwise. Very, very nerve wracking. I mean, I never put myself on camera for this long, for this often. So mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of mental humps to get over. Okay. Um, but as I start to get my bearings and um, you know, started talking about things I was comfortable with, it just got easier. And then All I right. got to this point. <laughs> well, I think the, the work that you're doing, everybody's getting to see you in process. I mean, those first few pieces you got done are really nice. Thank you. What do you hope to uh, achieve in week two? I don't know. Um, pieces have I done so far? Three. Uh, maybe I'll maybe I'll have ten done by next by the end of next week. Woo! Go here, Ryan. It helps to it helps to add numbers to your goals. Otherwise, it's hard to keep track of them. You know. Well, you will be receiving an envelope from me of already coded pa papers. Do as you will. All right. And then I'm going to send you maybe send you an image to cut on your 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 little device. 
Awesome. We just had some fun on a couple of things. Since I know you don't work small, and you you just didn't defy that with the piece you're working on now. What size is this piece you're working on now? Uh, this is eleven by fourteen. Very very oh. nice. Yeah yeah. And you said you're accustomed to working large. You're not accustomed to working small, right? Yeah. Well. Um, with freehand stuff, not this small. No, I mean, with the with the stencils, I mean, the records are pretty, they're pretty small, I guess. But I've never gotten this up close and personal with the paintbrush. Mm -hmm. So how does it feel? Feels good. I'm like really in the zone right now. <laughs> yeah. Well, we've been watching you, man. You have definitely been in the zone. <laughs> But that's what folks need to understand. It's not like, you know, we don't normally narrate everything that we do in between these shows. This is an, a new challenge for all of us trying to articulate this so you guys can follow what's happening. But pretty much of our process happens in the zone. Yeah. Well, Ryan, we're going to be looking forward to seeing what you have to offer in the coming days. We're gonna let you get back into your your zone. All right. Uh, let me ask you this, man. What's your sleeping hours looking like? I'm actually managing to get to bed before 1 a.m. Mm -hmm. and waking up around like eight or nine. So like I'm getting in seven or eight hours a night. Okay, that's good. That's pretty good. We figured since you were the youngest of the group that you would probably be working around the clock. <laughs> no, college days are over. <laughs> Brian said that day is over. He understands sleep patterns now. Yeah. I really like the colors. You're, I like how you're having fun with those colors in that background. Yeah, thanks. This is really fun. <laughs> All right, Ryan. Well, you, we will see you again tomorrow. Uh, shoot us more videos. That was a big plus. Uh -huh. Yeah. And um, how's that piece shaping on the table? You just let you incubating on it a little bit. The big one behind you. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's it's fun to look at to just glance up at every now and then. Mm -hmm. He's waiting to hear. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, Ryan, you have a good evening, man. We'll be checking you out tomorrow. Okay, Bye. Ryan. Bye. I guess that just leaves us too, huh? I guess so. Uh, what time is this? 9.30. It's going to be a while before the night shift kicks in. What? Well, what you got on, what you got on the road? I got the remainder of LaShawn Beal's... Um, process that I could play. Okay, let's watch the rest of LaShawn. Everyone, I'm back again here. Still working on the colors. Now I am just splashing a little color in the background
In my painting technique is a dry brush technique. I'm actually cheating, Louise, because I'm sitting here um, imagining what I'm going to do on this thing. I'm already pretty, pretty, have a pretty good idea where I'm going to go when I open up my envelope. You are muted. <laughs> you just never want to help us out. Uh, you know what? Sometimes, I, sometimes it seems like your lot, yours is. I can't change it. Like I can't change one of your feeds. Yours is the same way. Like I can't, um, I can't unmute you. I can mute you, but I can't unmute you all the time. Oh, okay. It's weird. It's weird, and I think it's because we're both in the in the same queue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, where it's like, oh, the host muted you. <laughs> so, so we're waiting for Mr. Sheldon. Yeah, we're waiting for Mr. Sheldon, but you know, ha ha. We are into the, uh, well, we had a pretty good diverse show today. We really did. So we're a lot really of people good. are beginning to give content, which makes the job a lot easier. You guys get a little bit more information. Mm -hmm. I, I really liked uh, what you call it's content too. What you call it? Um, <laughs> let me put my hat on. I really liked, uh, is it Michelle? Hold on, and I'll tell you who I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens when you're staring at the screen all day. <laughs> Michelle, I really like Michelle's content. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've been actually, I've actually been holding on to that for a couple of days. So it's uh -huh. nice to be able to finally show it and give her a break for the day because she's been on live every day too. Oh, look! You didn't see my ring. I've been wearing it every day. Look at that. Nice. My Corinthia peoples. Very nice. Right. I've been, look, I've been wearing just paint wear. <laughs> I haven't had any jewelry. I'm wearing my, my worker glasses. It's got little specks of paint on it. You know, I put this on the other day for something, and then I just kept it on. I've just been I've just been wearing it because I seem to like it on. I usually wear it over here, but I, I like it on this finger. So it's my finger. It's my pinky finger ring now. Well, you know, uh, our friend should be logging in soon. I do have a vid I can show up to now. It's just probably two minutes. I give him enough time to get his brain together. This is from, in. this is from Creative Quarantine Baltimore. Oh, nice. See if I can get this thing together. I'm gonna be an expert at this by the end of the month. I know, I know. This was with Karen Buster, an artist by the name of Maurice Bradford. Okay. Myself. We did a weekend quarantine. Now, is this at your studio? My old studio. So we uh, checked in on Friday night, left on Monday night. So did you guys sleep in the studio? No, they all went home. I stayed at the studio pretty much all, all evening. Okay. The weekend, the whole weekend. Ooh. But we we talking about crazy hours at night. And Lauren Live was also with us. 
Okay. James Murphy Jr. He's a Baltimore artist. So it was five of us that weekend. Mm-hmm. So is this the largest group you've had? Uh, yes. 12 is the largest. We've had a group of 10, but that was only a weekend quarantine. Okay. That's pretty neat. I like that. Yeah, Maurice is a mentee of mine. I've been working with him since he was about eight years old. He's probably, wow, 38 now, going on 40. Really? Still doing his art. That's pretty fabulous. Now, where did you guys show this this work? Uh, most of the quarantine works, that's, those things don't even exist anymore. They've been sold. Mm-hmm. You, this was back in 2006. This was the same year as the first quarantine in California. Wondering, did you guys have a show? or? No, we did not. This was just a weekend lock-in and create what you can create in one weekend. Mm, okay. That's kind of fun. Yeah, so that's what's going on. Mm-hmm. So I like to give people a flavor of what's happened in some of the other quarantines. Well, because there was so much going on. Uh, you're rubbing your eyes, and it's only nine nine forty. Oh no, my eyes were itchy, itchy, itchy. Well, you know, you you should be given, you should be commended. You have done a wonderful job for week one. You know, if we can get you to clean up them videos. You, you might have you it. know what I know. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna play your video. No, <laughs> no, no, don't you know play it's, it's the night shift. Don't play messy videos, Poncho. Did you I, no you can't? I took it off. Which video? Which one are you playing? I took that other one off. Oh, you, you beat me to it. Oh, I take stuff off. Uh, I'm not into uh You should have kept my welcome video all up there. <laughs> well, you know, we're in that kind of time. We're going to give our friend a couple more minutes to log in. And if not, we may just call it for tonight. <laughs> all of the artists. Yeah, because are... he's normally in by now, isn't he? Mm, he's normally in by now. But, you know, everybody's on a different zone. It is Friday. We have this is the beginning of week two. Mm-hmm. You're right. It is Friday. He might be out somewhere. Frankie Frankie didn't tune in today, so Frankie needed a break. He's been on every day as well. So we got Friday. It's Friday. They might be having a Friday. That's right. Twelve artists is enough to make content very easily. So, Mm -hmm. right. So, well, content isn't the problem. It's getting it all. (laughs) I've been making content. Yeah, well, that that is that is a challenge. Well, I finally got all the stuff out to the gallery. I think. Well, that's good. I hope they don't see this. I know. <laughs> I don't know. I talked to them. I talked to them today because they had they needed something else. They were like, "Louise, the exhibit looks amazing." I was like, "Great, can't wait to see it." Oh, Aaron played my video today. My uh, my live stream, uh, my virtual gallery video today. Oh, good. Mm-hmm. Very cool. I was like, that's cool. Well, for those of you that have been watching the show all week and you're not really um, you know, aware of who the artists are, we're going to refresh your memory.
<laughs> I like that one. That's right. I like. I gotta that one. find us some more uh, creativity quotes for next week. I like that one. So you know, uh, Rosemary didn't check in today, which is surprise. Usually, I see her face pop into the studio uh, mm -hmm. now and then. But mm -hmm. that's, uh, we got a big weekend coming. So what you got? She, in left, she left some comments. She left some comments. Yeah, I saw those comments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but she's <laughs> she's she's watching the show now. I didn't say she wasn't watching the show. She's been yeah, watching she didn't the pop show in. Me. It was As a little matter of fact, we got some. Hey, if you're out there watching and you've been watching the whole time, put a comment in so we can pop you up on the screen. We know we got some loyal fans out there because we got 15 uh, plus people watching. It's probably uh -huh. about 25 people out there watching all around. Uh -huh. Post a comment to let us know you are one of our loyal followers so we can know what's up. Oh, yeah. And make sure you're around. Invite your friends. We're going to be doing, you know, I got, I, I, I you know, since Deborah, the, uh, Deborah started it, I'm going, I got a piece that I'm going to give away. Well, you know, that's a good thing to start. I think I'll do a giveaway as well. So we just yeah, so. see how we can paste that out for the rest of the week. And uh -huh. Spread the love. Spread, Spread the love. love. I was like, when I was working, I said, oh, I'm gonna, oh, look, I'm here. <laughs> you got one out there. Uh Louis Mouse will pop put it up. <laughs> <laughs> that Rosemary. I only have a breakdown, Rosemary. I told you, I told you she was watching the show. She right. We need you. Video. Can't be breaking down. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Well, you know, Carla Jones has been in the house Carla's all week. We got to do something out. special for Carla Jones. She might have to be. Uh -oh, wait a minute. Here Spotlight. they come. Let us know you What's out there. Carol, Gray? How you doing out there? I know you've been following us from uh -huh. the beginning. We like to know you guys are out there hanging out with us. We you appreciate know? that. We appreciate your support. <laughs> who else is out there? We're just curious to see who's out yeah, there. Yeah, let us know. Give us a we shout out. I already knew Carla Jones was out there because she's been rolling strong oh, all Carla's week. Carla's been hanging out with us day she, and night. She's been coming in from uh, watching YouTube. Uh -huh. That's right. You know, Queen Mother's just been uh, Carla, the Detroit is Detroit is in the house. The house, yes. That's right. I love I love doing shows. I got uh, Sherwood Forest Gallery supports me down there. Joe's Limited Edition supports me there. Ian Grant at uh, Springfield Mall. Uh, Yamoja uh, Fine Art. Oh, they you're just me. all over Detroit. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a lot of connections in Detroit. I got a funny uh, story too that I tell every now and then. Uh, one night was real hungry, and uh, you probably heard the story already. But the people who are watching probably have. I heard. have it. Go ahead. Uh, so uh, Lashawn says, "Have you ever had a shrimp bucket?" And I said, "A shrimp bucket? What the hell is a shrimp bucket?" <laughs> he he goes proceeds to jump into a car. He goes into this place. He comes out with it looks like a bucket of chicken, but it's shrimp. So we go back to the hotel and we end up eating a bucket of shrimp. And I told you we were watching South Park. You remember that story? Right. That, that. He introduced me that night to South Park. I had never seen South Park before. So here I am in a hotel making all this noise in a room with another man eating <laughs> a shrimp a bucket. Uh, bucket watching South Park. See, that's friends, though. That's friends. That's right. <laughs> you well, can well, do that kind of stuff with friends. You can do that kind of stuff with friends. We're gonna get ready to wind this thing down. It's uh -huh. about uh, three. Uh, we about three hours, four, almost four hours in. Tomorrow we'll be starting again at two e uh, central time. I think it's is that central or no, mountain? No, four central time, two mountain. Okay. Oh, four, look, look who popped in! Look who popped in! Yeah, but we don't know whether she's ready to go in or not because she, she's <laughs> she's got her screen off. <gasps> She's in, but she's not in. Nobody. She must not have a crown on and her lights up. <laughs> oh, you know what? We haven't what we haven't done. We haven't had our conversation as uh, avatars. What's up? What's up? Well, you know, I'm sexier as an avatar as I am in person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Everybody so. thinks that, but um, you know, my avatar is way more. Yeah, your avatar is, but you know, mine's got a sense of humor. You know, I, I can't be one thing to all people. Well, then so I'm just gonna have to, 
I'm just gonna have to be cool then. Sometimes you just gotta rotate it around, let people see the other sides of you. Yes, yes. Yes, but since I'm on this avatar, you know I don't have as many. Yeah, you just got two. And and <laughs> and, and, and I even got one that makes you look mellow like I'm sleeping. There you go. <laughs> I don't have as many avatars as you, and you know why. Because every exactly. time I pop in here. All, like, all this means is that we got way too much time on our hands. <laughs> While we've been waiting for Mr. Uh, Sheldon Smith to turn in, he must be having some te technical difficulties. I saw him pop into the studio earlier today. Oh, really? And he was outside painting some panels. Oh, nice. Did you pull him up? Uh, no, at the time I didn't because his feet looked like it disappeared. Oh, okay. But I'm sure he'll have something for us coming up soon. He's mm -hmm. been another one that's been live every day since we started. So. Yeah. We've been trying to give a couple of artists breaks so they don't have to broadcast. This is something that you can't imagine. Artists came into this project thinking they were just going to be creating. They didn't realize mm -hmm. that this whole virtual piece was going to come into place. Right. We were supposed to meet in a location, all 12 of us, and paint in that location and vibe personally, non-public. Mm -hmm. And then we had to go virtual because of the COVID crisis. Uh, like everybody else, we had to try to find a way to still present this project. And I think in the process of doing that, this this really has turned into something we didn't imagine. So oh, are, something totally different because mm -hmm. like just like you said, we would have all been locked in a room and it was just been us and none of the world. I think two or three fist fights might have started by now. <laughs> you know, but we good to go. Everybody's uh is is catching on to the technology piece of it and doing their best part to present their work, which is an extra job that they didn't intend to do. Mm -hmm. so I want to thank all of them for being patient with the process. Uh, Sheba Meyer has been having some problems with her equipment, so we're going to try to see if we can get her some sort of replacement equipment so we can get her back online. Mm -hmm. uh, but other than that, other than the tech challenges uh, and the sleep challenges, we do mine. <laughs> the sleep challenges. Oh, she said, I'm not going to be able to pop in. <laughs> That's all right. So with that being said, y'all, we are just going to wrap up the show. We're going to do our thing. So we will see you guys tomorrow at 2. Yes. Two. Four. No, no, Poncho. Four. I, Four. I, that's why I get confused. You tell the Central. Um, You tell your time zone. I tell mine. Right. 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. 2 o'clock Mountain. Boom. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Said, yeah, we got to stay in our own lane, right? <laughs> I can't give you a time zone. That's right. Stay out. Get out of my room. <laughs> Look, ejection. <laughs> Until tomorrow, y'all, we are signing off. We will be seeing you this weekend. Have a great night.